Broadcasting live from the Loading Ready Run Orbiting Underground Moon Base, it's the Lurecast. Twentieth anniversary edition. Hello, I'm Graham. And I'm Paul. This is episode It's live to tape. <laughs> and then edited. And then edited. Which is literally everything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It's not. All right. Yeah. This is episode eight uh, of the uh, Loading Ready Run 20th Anniversary Retrospective Podcast Series, where today we're going to be talking uh, about podcasts, among other things. But first, a big thing that we've been doing since Checks Notes, March of 2016, is the pre-pre-release. So we're going to start right away. We don't want to waste any more of your time. We, are, we will be showing you deck building, specifically... Mr. Marshall Sutcliffe is going to be walking through his deck building process with you uh, live on camera with our judge for the day, Serge, who is going to explain some of the Shadows of Innistrad mechanics in case you are unclear on what those may be. Which uh, was a very funny name and now is just a thing that it's now it's just it's the PPR, it's the pre-pre-release. In uh, fact, we've called a couple of things pre-pre-releases that never even, that don't actually had didn't actually have a release well, for very. It's the brand didn't now. Didn't have a pre-release for various reasons. Yeah. yeah. Um, essentially, it was an idea that uh, James had come up with. Every time we. Oh! <laughs> because we'd been to Wizards a couple times for the Community Cup, mm. which was a, a fun thing that they did every year. They brought a bunch of magic content creators to Seattle, to Wizards of the Coast, and. Over a couple days, you sort of had like a tournament between the community team and the wizards team, and it was a uh, you know it like it was a it was a fun thing, but it was also like not very well. It was a did was broadcast. It, it was a well so because yeah, it started as the Magic Online Community Cup, right? Right. It was only like a Magic Online thing, and then it became like a just a generalist community cup thing like the first year i went some of the people involved was like a mitgo grinder uh someone who worked like on the beta testing team was part of the community team right even though they were that i guess they were a contractor to wizards but I, it's, they were not on the wizards team they were not like right because the wizards team was like mostly folks from from like wizards r d uh and then like me and Usually they had a pro, so that that year it was Luis, and then like Marshall was there. That's where we met where we met Marshall. Um, so then it sort of expanded into into that. But they did the community cup up to 2015, and then there wasn't really signs. I think if I recall correctly, there wasn't really signs they were going to do one in 2016. And so James had thought, well, what if we make our own community cup? With black, no, hang on. With magic, that was it. Yes, mm. we we do our own sort of thing. We do we do a event that we stream because the thing about the community cup is it was a lot of fun, but it was never as public facing as it should have been. Like there was text coverage. Right. Uh, they brought us in one year to produce one, uh, and that was the most like actively streamed one that that they did and it still didn't like quite land how they wanted to i do feel a little thrown into the deep end by that <laughs> that event like it was they brought us there to like help and like you know sort of give like our expertise on streaming and stuff and then when i arrived they were like all right graham so you're producing and i was like what <laughs> And like I was in charge of like scheduling the commentators all of a sudden. I was like, well, this is well beyond what I had expected when I was brought down here. So yeah, James had pitched Wizards on the idea of this pre-pre-release where it would be some of us and then we bring in outside guests and we produce this thing from our from the moon base and we uh show off the cards and such uh from the new set a week before the actual pre-release. So it's like this cool streamed preview event. And I think it went pretty well. And they never tried to bring the Community Cup back because I think this kind of ate its lunch, which is oops, just fine. Well, you know, that's the funny thing is that there have been a, there have been a couple comments on like Reddit or whatever over the years about like, how come Wizards only ever gets Loading Ready Run to do this? Why can't, mm -hmm. why can't they ask other people to do this? And it's like, no, because it's ours. <laughs> this was Oops. our idea. We, pitch, we pitched it to them. It's also something that 
I, I mean, especially when we started, the the combination of uh, the uh, production capabilities, mm. having the studio space and mm -hmm. having the uh, knowledge base to produce it, and the magic playing capabilities and yeah. the contacts in the magic community. Um, it, it was kind of a neat thing in the sense that I don't think a lot of people, I mean, even uh, Watsi internally could have really done it mm -hmm. in the same way anyway. Yeah. Which was kind of a fun thing. It was like, this is something that we can do, that, that, that we can do that not a lot of other people can do. Yeah. Um, and it's different from, you know, coverage of like, cause, cause of course they, they, they had varying amounts of coverage of the, the various, uh, magic GPs and, and the, uh, pro tours and stuff. But this was this idea of, of showing it off for the first time in a more casual environment Yeah, with folks who were, uh, primarily entertainers uh in addition to to magic players yeah so we we explicitly were brought in people not necessarily brought in like magic pros we more brought in you know uh magic content creators streamers mm -hmm. and people who we knew could both play magic and could be entertaining on camera cause yeah those uh, those Two things don't necessarily <laughs> coincide for everybody. There's a lot of and we've had a couple pros over the years, but that was never like a goal, right? Right. So and yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot of people who are very talented at magic, but to be at that high level of magic, you kind of have to be, you know, people will like if you if you see pro tour coverage, they they aren't doing a lot of joking and laughing about the flavor text on the cards. Mm -hmm. They're very focused on the game, which is entirely reasonable because it's serious business. Uh, but we wanted to make it something that was a little more friendly. Yeah. We decided that the way that we would do it was rather than having gameplay with separate commentary, that basically the players, because again, like you said, we tried to get people who are already affable and good on camera and entertaining and stuff. The players would largely be providing their own commentary, mm. but then what if there's actually like, they have to go into the tank and make a decision. You don't just want to sit there staring at someone thinking for a few minutes. And so we had this, this, the third role that we call the table friend. <laughs> and Wait, was that from the very first, I think it was at the very first PPR. Yeah, it was thumbs up from James. And yeah, the idea for that was that basically they sort of are the host for the round and they go, hello, welcome back. These are the players. Mm -hmm. And then they get in and then the players sort of do most of the heavy lifting and sort of how the gameplay is. But the the table friend is sort of like advocate for the audience being like, well, now what do you, you know, someone's asking this. What do you think about that? Or sort of, you know, literally like filling time with, you know, if player one is deep in the tank, then the table friend and player two can have a chat. And so right. we, don't, we don't end up with sort of dead air and it just turns into this, you know, fun kind of like casual hangout, which is really nice. All right. All right. All right. You two, spread out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You two. Grab the table. Just Adam, Adam. Yeah, you too. No, you no, Adam, it's it. fine. It's fine. Okay. All right, Adam, move that chair. Yeah. Over. Okay. Over. Be oh. Oh, it's fine. That's fine. It's just water. One second. <laughs> Somebody grab the towel. Uh, <laughs> James, you're on towel duty. Uh, and of course, at this point, we had been streaming our own uh, real, like, like a, a, a paper magic coverage mm -hmm. just of our, you know, regular the friday night paper fight. i think the friday night paper fight existed, existed at, yeah at this point yeah uh and so we you know we knew a lot of stuff about how to uh how to set to how to present magic in that way this is the most fun i've had and remember <laughs> mom said it's my turn to play the game next okay okay uh, who starts the sub game i start the sub game because i uh began the sub okay game. that makes sense and we had, you know, the card recognizer and that kind of stuff to keep things, uh, to, to make sure it was sort of clear to everybody what was going on. I should say, I guess, sort of tangentially related, just as a brief sort of sidebar, was that this was after the sort of the, the stream refresh where we decided, and I say we, it's not, not literally everybody, but sort of a higher level like management i guess decision to 
change the streaming focus from individual shows hosted by individual people so that it was like this is Cameron's show and Graham's show and Paul's show into more sort of themed shows with specific hosts but that it wasn't that it was more sort of you know we have like the let's nope and we had uh, 18 games and counting uh, at right. the time and we had new day tuesday and stuff and obviously the, the some of those shows are still around like the friday night paper fight and things like that but other ones have sort of have developed and some have dropped off and some have added on but moving to less of like this is this person's show and moving into more of a realm of like this is the a show with a specific tone and theme and uh, intent and, and regardless of who happens to be hosting it. Yeah, and I mean, obviously a lot of shows even now have sort of fairly defined hosts. Yeah, which is fine. Right, which is fine, but but that isn't necessarily, you know, somebody can't, people can sort of sub in and do stuff. It isn't like, you know, this person's not here, so this show can't happen. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes sometimes we can do sub people in and do different things like that. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a little more flexibility in that way. Yeah. So because we had the Friday Night Paper Fight and we already proven that we know how to broadcast, you know, paper magic and in some ways, in, in some ways not as good, but in some ways better than official magic coverage at the time, uh, we sort of, you know, this was a way that we could demonstrate, hey, you know, let us do this thing and look how good we can make it look and we we can keep it you know, like fun and light and show off these cards and sort of get hype up going for a new set. Uh, and they went for it. Yeah. As an aside, one of the things that was interesting. Um, so, you know, uh, we've got the, the card recognizer system that we use mm -hmm. for Friday Night Paper Fight and we use for lots of different stuff, um, which is based around a, uh, a, a card, um, a card recognizer thing for for like you know building your own you can like make your own collection it's called yeah. deck builder um and and in that thing you can you know select you know i'm gonna make i'm gonna do cards from whatever um uh the the whatever innistrad or, or you can choose what cards you know. of course the problem is that when we were doing the pre pre-release the cards haven't been released yet right so those card images weren't available uh, to the uh, manufacturers of this game, um, and so it was actually it, it was it, it worked out quite well. We you know I uh, we I was able to talk to the um, developers of this product, and uh, uh, you know talk to them about what we were using it for because we were using you know we were using it for something that it was never sort of intended for, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, they were able to they they made some changes to it and actually gave us a. Um, a program to generate sort of card files from sets of images. So then we could, uh, you know, get the images from Wizards of the Coast uh, and generate the the card images uh, and and use it for the event. So uh, much much before they were actually publicly available. Uh, so that was that that was one of the sort of interesting processes you, you sort of go through when you're. When you're doing something like that where you're uh it's like we need to do this thing but we're dealing with uh confidential material you know we've got these cards before they're actually publicly available mm -hmm. so we can't just be we can't just like show them to random uh uh people be like hey these are the cards we're going to need can you prepare a thing for us uh, so yeah, luckily that, that we were able to, uh, set that up. Yeah. And so since March of 2016, we have produced at time of recording, uh, about 40 pre pre-release events. Nice. Uh, featuring, uh, says here over 70 in guest appearances. Nice. Yeah. Cause we've had a couple of repeat appearances and stuff and, uh, there's been some incredibly memorable moments. One of the top all time clips on our Twitch channel is Cameron being absolutely sent into the Shadow Realm at the unstable pre-release where Wedge from the Mana Source with Mark as his second player on his team because he cast Doubleheader, I think it was, mm. uh, start asks uses Spike, I want to say it's Spike Tournament Grinder, to 
ask for a card outside the game and we had a copy of Shaharazad sitting on the set so he asks for Shaharazad and casts it and puts Cameron into a sub game of Shaharazad at the PPR yeah but um, next turn I can take my name and jelly so I can do it next turn well he's not dead <laughs> Ass- <laughs> assuming if the sub game isn't over assuming you willing want to willing test subject you're gonna have to kill me <laughs> <laughs> say go good stuff we're two for two, by the way, of, of going, <laughs> doing unset pre, pre-releases, entering sub-games that are not from that set. Right, yeah, because of course, <laughs> yeah, we did the, uh, was it Basement something? At, uh, uh, Enter the Dungeon. Enter the Dungeon. At which, Unstable, where you play Under the Table. Where you play Under the Table, yeah. Uh, yeah, those, the, it's been uh, super fun to not only see the cards, obviously, before they come out, but also to... Think about, you know, uh, how to present things in new and interesting ways. You know, we will have, we'll try to do fun things for the, the, uh, Unfinity. We had, uh, we got little, uh, uh, raffle tickets Mm -hmm. for the, the, the tickets and stuff. And we, you know, tokens of different types and doing different fun things like that. I love seeing when you get to do things with the overlay as well. You like yeah, night yeah. and day and night and day uh, city's had, blessing. Night and day is still useful. That interface we still use for yeah, uh, North of Hundred Showdown. It comes up every once it comes in a up while. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or or uh, the ninjutsu one we did where where like if you ninja, ninja a card then it goes like yeah and the uh, sword cuts through it. The again, speaking of unstable again, the host augment overlay. Yeah. love that one as well. Still, st- still, uh, I'm still ride or die for. Uh, Host augment. Oh yeah. I think I think that should be in Black Border Magic. I think so too. Anyway. So the first the first PPR was at Moonbase Delta. So this right. was our fourth Moonbase Delta. Yeah, I guess four. we haven't talked we haven't talked about Delta yet. Yeah. And so we were at Moonbase three in the back half of Glenn's building, mm-hmm. which we talked about before. We were there for about five years or so. And when we started streaming, we realized we were really pushing up against the limits of sort of what we could do there. We'd been doing desert bus in the basement of that building, but it was getting real cramped. Yeah. And when we started doing the streaming, we had sort of like a, we built a set down there for, well, we filmed feed dump against that set. Well, so first of all, we filmed feed dump just in the basement there, right. just on a couch. And then we were like, all right, well, let's actually use this corner and build like a, a permanent set down here. And that was what we used for when we would do AFK streaming our first one I believe it was the first one was Hero Quest mm. and we we did there's photos of like the rig with like a the webcam yeah. hanging from a jib arm and it was it was a complete mess and you know it it was sort of working but we realized that we we needed a dedicated live streaming space for tabletop gaming and we didn't have the room for that and it was just very awkwardly laid out and there just there just wasn't enough square footage much as we loved glenn in that space it was you know we were outgrowing it and so we found another office space down the street from there yeah in the multiple sclerosis society building and this is i think i joked in a previous episode of this but it was true at the time that uh, they'd been trying to rent this space out because it was more space than they needed they were trying to rent out this office to like just please not a dispensary (laughs) because this was before weed was legal in canada and so there were so many gray market dispensaries popping up all over town right because it was like it wasn't legal but everyone figured it was going to be legalized but it also like the cops weren't enforcing it and so you could just you could literally just open an actual storefront and being like i don't sell weed and even though you definitely did and so they were like we just don't want because they were just desperate for any any store frontage, and uh, so yeah, so we moved moved into the the this sort of end this first floor end unit that they had uh, that had its um, we had a shared bathroom. We had to leave the leave our space to go to use a shared bathroom, which was fine. Um, and uh, you could see in I think the some of the hustle episodes with with Ian uh, like the the beige episodes when we sort of go into like the we do like the office chair racing in the hallway that was all the ms building yeah we took Uh, advantage of some of the um yeah those sort of larger building when they weren't using things yeah which they said we could do and i mentioned that when we moved in they were like oh bionic trousers do you make like mobility aids and it was like no we make sketch comedy on the internet and so we had 
two dedicated rooms there for video streaming and in-person streaming. And that was sort of where the, the sort of the distinct studios, I mean, we had different rooms for it at Moonbase 3, but it was like we had one room for video game streaming and then the space we could find yeah. for in-person streaming. And so this was like, this is actually a dedicated in-person streaming room, uh, uh, which was which like, was also for like podcasts. Room was like this big. Yeah, it was also where we filmed podcasts and things like that. And uh, it's weird. It casts a long shadow, but we were only there for about a year and a half. Yeah, it's, yeah. I always think that it's longer than that. But yeah, but basically what, what happened was that the the MS Society nationally sold the building, even though the MS Society locally were the ones who had purchased it originally. I don't know. There was internal drama. I'm not part of it. They sold the building. And then, so it was empty for a while, and we filmed Moonbase Battlegrounds there, which was right. a lot of fun. So we got to, we, we got a couple months of, basically, we were the only people still in the building. What was that? <laughs> what? No, you have a gun! And then uh, the new people that bought it were a-holes, uh, mm-hmm. to, to put it. To put it gently, and they yeah they made it clear that they did not want us there. No, um, we had you know a lease for a couple of years, mm-hmm. but there's you know things that can be done uh, to make even if you have a lease to make it not uh, not good to stay. Yeah, basically the 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 fine print that they used was that it didn't specify in the lease which part of the building. We were leasing just the amount of square footage. And so they said, as of this date, you need to move into this part of the building, which, hey, is more square footage than you're using now. So isn't that nice of us? But it's like this was a giant cavernous single and, room. But, you know, we have like all our stuff set up, green screens in the place that we're in. They wanted our office because it was the like most recently renovated and nicely finished part of this otherwise fairly dated building. Because we because we renovated, we finished it, renovated and finished it, and so we put all this money into it. And they were basically like, "No, we've decided you have to move into this thing." And we were like, "But we can't. We literally can't do our work in that part of the building. This is completely unreasonable." And they went, "Well, yeah." They also tried. I I don't know if you remember this. They also tried to uh, make us pay for the property tax for the entire building. (laughs) Our lease was very clear about this, that we paid a percentage of property tax equal to the percentage of square footage that we had for the whole building. It was a huge building. So we paid our tiny percentage of the property tax. And they tried to, they like really used a lot of bluster to be like, oh yeah, no, no, no. Well, because you're the only tenant you're liable for the entire building. And it's like, no, we aren't. Just That's not how that works. Just because you haven't found any other people. Anyway. Yeah, I refused. So- I was like, take me to small claims court. <laughs> if you really think you have a leg to stand on, go for it. And, so, uh, uh, so yeah, yeah, so we had to move out of there uh, quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, Real fast. And, it was awful. Uh, so we, uh, yeah, we ended up to uh, Moonbase Mark V. Yeah. We bought 60-odd Eket cubes, which are these cute little cubes. Uh, Graham already put a couple together. Uh, and they are very slick. They go together one, two, three, four, as the kind of showing off there. Um, but yeah, they snap together. And since we have so many of them to do, uh, Graham and I are going to get started on actually getting them done, or at least as many as we can, because also we want to get all the cardboard. There's a stack of cardboard there, and there's going to be more other places. We want to get all the cardboard out of here, at least, I think, by, like, Saturday or something. Uh, so, yeah, I, it's... They're, like, take three minutes to pop together, but there are 60 of them. That's 180 minutes if we work without stopping. That's three hours. Moonbase Mark V was, was, I mean, honestly, despite how quickly we had to move in there it was nice there, we did a, we did a whole video about this obviously about the the move um but you know the the amazing general contractor that we worked with who made it happen very quickly um you yeah, know, we, she talked to us one day and she was like how do you feel about uh, plywood walls and we were like well uh i like we we'd i guess we'd prefer drywall because you know then we can like paint it and stuff and she was like no uh, sorry 
I wasn't actually giving you an option. I was just asking how you feel about it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we, we worked it out. I remember when, when we moved to uh, Moonbase 6, and we're now, uh, you know, obviously the, the we we completely like got it and redid this place, all this stuff it was about I think from from looking to uh, to to moving into this place it was about eighteen months. I think that's I think. what James said. Yep, eighteen months. Uh, Whereas Mark f moving from being told we had to move out mm -hmm. to moving into Mark Five was six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> which included you know basically a gut and mm -hmm. and redo of the place so you know so the reason we had to have plywood walls is because they couldn't get drywallers yeah it was just you, we couldn't there, there, there at the time yeah. there's there's and even now there there's a big uh construction boom in in victoria yeah. so there's like couldn't get drywallers we also yeah also we we took advantage of the fact that uh the the place underneath us uh, was also like the place underneath Mark Five was also under construction, mm -hmm. and like new people were moving in, so people weren't that suspicious when like a bunch of contractors started showing up. <laughs> yeah, I, as far as I am aware, everything was done with the proper permits and by the letter of the law. As far as I am aware, <laughs> but boy, it was done fast. <laughs> and, so, but so yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it all worked out uh, very uh, very well, honestly. And, like, really, Moonbase 5 was nice. Like, we, you know, we were there for six years. Again, it doesn't feel like we were there for that long because, like, for two of those years, it was lockdown. And we so we basically didn't use basically it. Basically didn't use it. And the landlord was not giving us any sort of uh, financial aid on that. And, uh, you know, we had bees a couple times. And there was, there was a lot of restaurants in the lower part of the building. And so we definitely had one or two mice taking refuge from whatever... I assumed that the restaurants had were doing. You 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 just get mice in downtown Victoria if you have restaurants, and so I assumed that whatever extermination plan they were using scared the mice upstairs. Mm. So we we had a we had a few of them uh, sometimes, and uh, so those those parts weren't great. But broadly speaking, uh, you know, it was a it was a nice it was a nice moon base, but we did have to move in there in a real quick hurry. And again, we were sort of pushing up against it would be really nice to have a little bit more space. Down the end of the hall, we have the new props and costumes room, which is huge and just keeps going and already needs a cleanup, but such is life. Uh, and uh, that joke in the crap shot was not a joke. We have a bed here with the giant dick butt. The dick butt's not gonna stay. Uh, don't worry, he's going to a loving home. And uh, so that's when we finally ended up moving here but i assume we'll talk about that later uh, but i will say so, actually sorry the, the plywood thing we couldn't get it painted because we we asked the painters who were doing like the trim we were like so can you paint this and he was like well you can but then you've got to like sand it and prime it and it's gonna be really expensive and we were like fine fine don't don't it's so the, the, the thing a contractor does when technically you can but they don't want to yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so the live set now is looking how it originally designed it which it, with the the dark blue wall mm. it was never meant to have the plywood wall that was very reflective so now it looks sort of more more as we'd intended but what we did get at moonbase mark 5 was we had the third studio we right. had the video game streaming studio the live streaming studio and the podcast studio this looks great Wow, nicely done! You don't even need to screw that in, it fits so well. We had a couple like that, the press I'm, fit. I'm always going to sit over here. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Which brings us to... Which looked very much like this. Thing. Very much like this. We brought the barn board with us. Yeah. Uh, which brings us to the section that James has labeled in all caps and bold in the notes as Podcast Extravaganza. We're doing this... Uh, a little out of chronological order if we're just going but just to go through all the podcasts all the podcasts we've ever done um, um yeah yeah we started out obviously doing uh the lure cast in 2006 but then uh several months after that we were like hey 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 remember like six to eight months ago you had that cool idea and and paul said yes yes and i said we should we should actually do it and then and then 
Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, and then so we try to do, uh, set up the site, and, oh, let me think, um... <laughs> initial there, old concept? Yeah, initial, so the initial concept, which I, I think was mentioned once in the forums, but is, um, uh, for some reason, we thought it would be a good idea to do, the first design was, um, called Penrose Tiles, it was gonna be the name of the site. Yeah, which was just Graham and I, uh, usually, I mean, you start out, it was just Graham and I, like, sitting uh in front of his laptop mm -hmm. uh often the like fan of the laptop would kick in and so there'd be like <laughs> in the background the the recording methods have improved over the years um and then and then that expanded to the um the uh video game one as well there's so much stuff in skyrim that like where do you get to that town the guy from the thieves guild came up to me and was like, hey, I see that you know your way around thievery, because I do. You know, help me out with this job. Apparently you've been really bad at keeping that I guess. <laughs> under wraps. I know, it's weird. It's like, whenever <laughs> I walk... Like, does everybody know who I am? Like, I, 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 I never get seen, yet I walk into a place and they're like, you better not be trying any thievery around here. And I'm like, what? How? Your what? reputation proceeds. I'm a guy. I'm just a cat they, person. They haven't... They... They haven't actually seen anything happen, but they've noticed that there are less things in their house when you leave. <laughs> okay, that's that's probably my fault. Yeah, so we because we started doing the Lurcast, and it began as you say with just myself and Paul, and then there was like a weekly guest, and generally it was talking about sort of behind the scenes of the sketch that we'd done that past week, slash whatever else we felt like talking and like, about, and then Q and A. Yeah, and a big part of that ended up being video games, and so it so much of it ended up being video games that we were like, this is ridiculous. And eventually in 2010, we spun that off into its own show of those games we played, which was a reference to the 64 K video, the, the song, the, the, those games that we played. which meant the Lurcast went back to being basically behind the scenes of the sketch and mostly Q&A. We talked about the forums before. The Q&A thread on the forums, I think we got to Inbox Zero once, maybe a couple weeks after it started. And yeah. <laughs> after that, it was this, this absolute like Mount Olympus of questions from the forum. We never finished it. No. And at a certain, it outlasted the podcast. And obviously at a certain point, we... Uh, we stopped doing that. And then, of course, years later, we brought back Askler as its own podcast. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to Askler. Uh, Graham here. Cameron with, here. And Ian on your left. Well, my left. Is this in stereo? It's your... Now we have to flip the it's thing. It's your you right backwards. if you are facing the podcast. Mm, the podcast or the left. video. Yes, Good. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exit podcast left. <laughs> uh, but with sort of a different style. It was more, uh, it was to do with the um, doing it on the, the YouTube membership thing and having just like a, a cast of, of three people answering questions. And that seemed to work a lot better. Well, because we talked last. Um, last episode about the Patreon and the, how we don't want to sort of gate mm. uh, gate stuff. And part of that was when we turned on YouTube memberships because we want to be able to, like if someone doesn't want to sign up for Patreon and they don't watch on Twitch, but they're already in sort of the Google ecosystem and they still want to be able to support us, we want to make it as easy as possible for right. people to give us money, frankly. And YouTube is like, you have to offer a reward. You have to offer something. You can't just do like we do on Patreon where we go, yeah, well, I don't know, just give us five bucks if you like. Uh, and so, the but we don't want to gate the video. So, because what they want you to do is do, no, there's, there's videos that are only for members. So what we decided is only members can ask questions for Askler. <laughs> but the videos will go out to everybody. Yeah. There were various other things um, that sort of were... I guess just based around a particular uh, person or person's interests. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're like, yeah, you know what? Podcasts, I mean, the nice thing about podcasts is, is de depending on how you do them, but most of the time they're a relatively low uh, impact 
thing, mm -hmm. you know, especially if they're audio only. Yeah, which is uh, we never do anymore because people like to watch, you know, people were like, hey, I want to watch these on, can you put these on YouTube as well, right? All of our podcasts, by the way, all of our podcasts are still available via RSS feed. Mm. Uh, and you can find them on iTunes and on Spotify. Yeah. But people were like, I want to watch them on YouTube. So eventually we started doing vidcasts as well. I mean, pretty early in the, not pretty early, but like partway through the Lurcast, we would do a video version of them as well. They're not edited at all. Instead of doing uh, the Q&A stuff, we decided that we would instead just sort of take one big Q and A it for the entire session. Uh, and sounds dirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, no, it sounds Canadian because we're going to give it <laughs> okay. A. We're going to A your cues. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to A our own cues. Whoa. 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 Don't you have to be super flexible to be able to do that? <laughs> I used to be able to do that. Whoa! <laughs> then, I, then I broke my Dude. head. Those games we played, just to, just to get your timeline, uh, that was 2010, and we stopped in 2013 because... I can't remember why. Was it just, I think it was just like we didn't have as much to talk about. It was just like, I don't know, often you're not like, especially if you're playing like an RPG or playing like, you know, a WoW or or some kind of long going game. It's just mm. like, I don't play anything new this week. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. I don't have any strong opinions about stuff. And we were doing like Checkpoint. So, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of video game stuff kind of came up in there. And yeah, just just there was it was just like yeah. There's no point in doing this if we're struggling for content. So instead, in 2013, we started up the we started up Tap Tap Concede. Mm -hmm. Broadcasting from the furnace layer of New Phyrexia, it's Tap Tap Concede. Hello. Hello. What up? Yo. Which continues to this day. So that was the Magic the Gathering podcast. That's the that's that's our longest running podcast, casual, I would say. Casual talking about Casual discussions of casual magic, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh sort of explicitly trying doing a uh again, like like with the talking about the pre pre release, talking you know, explicitly not doing because there, there was already at that even at that point quite a few magic podcasts about you know how to improve your game or whatever yeah and so it's like we're not limited resources like that doesn't make sense but we can just sort of chat about it we can yeah we can chat yeah, we about it do. and do yeah fun yeah. stuff and that seems to work well uh real quick james found the thread uh the most recent question on page 100 of the original askler thread is uh, from the 20th of September, 2010. Question from By9, who asks, do you guys enjoy relish? I do. I do. Yeah, Thank you for asking. In moderation. Yeah. So there you go. The yeah. person got their question answered 13 years later. Yeah, good. Uh, we There was a four episode, I guess we'll call it a limited run uh, podcast co called Corrector's Commentary. Were those guys in the theater? Oh, boy. The, the opinionated guys who have a lot to say about films. Mm -hmm. But I'm... not necessarily any qualifications to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. With Cameron and Alex doing literally sort of like riff tracks style, a commentary track on specific movies that you could sync up with watching the movie. And then right. Alex and Cameron would sort of give their thoughts. Not, yeah, not, not riff track, like not. It not like a jokey wasn't, thing. It wasn't comedy. It was more no. sort of informative yeah. talking about it uh we had kathleen and i did the magnum rewatch in 2015 mm -hmm. hello and welcome to the magnum pi rewatch podcast uh my name is graham i'm from loadingreadyrun.com where we do funny internet stuff uh i'm kathleen i'm also from that place yes and uh, this is something that we have actually wanted to do for a while. I, it started as a joke, didn't it? Well, my love of Magnum P.I. is no joke. Let's, let's right. back that truck up here a little bit. I'm sorry for ever suggesting such a thing. Where we were doing a rewatch podcast of Magnum P.I. Uh, then we had a baby, and that's what stopped Magnum Rewatch. Paul, I don't think this is working out as well as you thought it would. I'm kind of uncomfortable. That doesn't sound like something Kathleen would say. What? Are you kidding me? 
I'd totally say that. Still, many people in the audience hold a to hold a torch for Magnum Rewatch. Same. Uh, the I want to look up the full name for this one because in oh. 2016, Anno 2016, Annie. 2015, we launched Anno Annie. Broadcasting to you, not quite live, from the sacrapetal covered moon base orbiting underground somewhere wherever the hell this is located, it's Adewani! It was like the story of that anime that I watched sometime. The joke was it was like... Like a, a like, translated Japanese uh, uh, anime name. Yeah. Which tend to be really like long and uh, uh, overly wordy. Yeah. This was uh, Beej and Heather Innian and Corey talking about the anime that they were that they were watching that season it was sort of like their seasonal roundups and this has been uh preceded by beach's anime roundup which is not necessarily a podcast Su it's a stream that he does like quarterly Su succeeded by succeeded afterwards yes that's correct mio's gonna be married off out of a terrible family to the to the kudo household and he is a terrible man that has driven away all of his fiancés and so whatever it, this is a complicated show and it's based on light novel and it's on netflix so there's some facts for you wasn't that fun the problem with anawani was sort of twofold uh, in terms of a podcast i mean uh one there was some technical issues with um uh anime uh production companies are maybe the most uh stringent about copyright stuff it's brutal so we started out like we would show the um like the trailer the the or the, the opening titles no just yeah the, just the 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 trailer yeah on the on the screen behind them so it didn't even like cut to it on the screen behind them but it we they were kept getting flagged for uh copyright um, and so we ended up, we, we would also just show the like title screen on the screen behind them and it still kept getting flagged. Uh, and so it was just, so that, that was frustrating mm -hmm. and kind of, um, disappointing. And then like those games we played, there's the aspect where it's just like, you have to have an opinion about something, uh, on a regular schedule like your homework for this podcast is you have to ingest media and then form an opinion on it yeah yeah that you know it's the there is that thing where it's just like you run into situations where i only watched like one anime this month or, or the, this this season there wasn't anything that really you know caught my interest but in order to make the podcast work, we sort of have to ha yeah. generate opinions on it, which isn't that fun, um, which is part of the reason why, like, like you know, Beige does his sort of Beige anime roundup uh, on a semi-regular, like, on, on a kind of irregular basis. Yeah. Because it's sort of... It's when he's built up a critical mass of opinions yeah, that when he needs has to expel stuff. them. Yeah, if you if you have to, like, like you ha if you have to have new opinions every month or whatever, it's less yeah. interesting. Also in 2015, we launched Fight the Future. Oh yeah. With Dan and Paul. Welcome to the podcast. Each episode we review a young adult dystopia. And I'm Dan. I'm Paul. And this week uh, we're going to be talking about Divergent. But they never say, it's time to get divergent. No, they don't say like, you know, I've diverged or you're, di you're too divergy. That was super fun. That yeah. was something that uh, my brother was, my brother was uh, uh, living and working in Italy at the time. Uh, and it was sort of an excuse for us to hang out virtually more. Right. Fight the Future was... Uh, talking about uh, young adult dystopia films. The, this is right when like uh, the um, Hunger Games and that kind of stuff was mm -hmm. pretty big. So there was this uh, profusion of 
uh, young adult dystopia movies coming out. Um, and pretty much any uh, even moderately popular series was being like optioned for TV shows or movies. And not all of them deserved it. Uh, and and so, and, although we, you know, we tried to look at it, look at them and, and not be like super critical of the actual, uh, of the films. Mm -hmm. The idea was more looking at the world that the film portrayed. Yeah. Um, not necessarily like the quality of the acting in the movie or whatever. Um, but that was a lot of fun, and, and I really enjoyed that. And I, you know, still hear from people every once in a while uh, who 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 liked um, who liked that. <laughs> the best thing about that one was we had, we had sort of a couple different sections about it, and, and one of the sections was like, "Who would you be?" So it was like, in this young adult dystopia, right? Uh, who would you know? Where do you think you personally would fit in? Hmm. Um, and of course. We immediately ran into the problem where uh, my brother is three years older than me. Uh, and, you know, we, we were two guys in our mid 30s. Mm -hmm. uh, and you realize what, as you start watching this, it's like, oh, we would be the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> in a young adult dystopia, the, the adults are not the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that sort of turned into like, who would you want to be uh, more as opposed to who would you actually be? The Saunders brothers. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. The middle aged white guys are not usually the heroes in those yeah. ones. Yeah. That was, that was a lot of fun as a series to do. Um, but it, it sort of came to a, a, a logical ending point. Yeah. Um, it both, was sort of planned to be a limited series. Yeah, yeah. Both in the sense of, you know, we were starting, starting to get a little tired of it and also the profusion of those kind of uh, shows just was starting to tail off. Yeah. Uh, so we, uh, we 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 sort of finished that up in a in a way that worked out nicely. In 2016, we launched Sidewalk Slam, or mm -hmm. looks like some sort of Sidewalk Slam. Hey everybody, I'm Graham. I'm Adam, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about wrestling. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Is a wrestling podcast, and I've, we've actually had many requests mm. for a wrestling podcast because uh, I mean it's n never at the height, uh, you know, the dizzying heights of the Attitude Era. But yeah. wrestling is getting it's kind of like a cool thing. It's yeah. getting back it's into getting back to the back in sort of a little bit more mainstream. And you know what? And we have opinions about it, and not just that we have opinions that we don't feel are served by a lot of the online discourse. Yeah. Right. Which, technically speaking, is 2016 to present because we haven't said that it's done, but it's on sort of like, again, a similar kind of hiatus because the problem is that to record a 90-minute podcast on a wrestling pay-per-view, we have to watch and then form opinions on a four-hour wrestling pay-per-view. And that has proven oh. a challenge. Also, to be fair... The ninety-minute or the the, the four-hour uh, wrestling sometimes does end up being a four-hour podcast. Sometimes, also. yeah, we talk a lot about. It. <laughs> it's, we're passionate about the craft, um, so yeah, you know, perhaps you will see side. But this was myself and Adam talking about wrestling, and not not just talking about wrestling, uh, sort of like the quality of the matches, because there's plenty of people that do that. But we were sort of talking about the primarily focusing on the storytelling and the narratives because i think it's very interesting how wrestling storytelling is handled because it's by nature of it you have to sort of get a chapter of a given story every week often culminating at these bigger pay-per-view events and also the story must be punctuated by fights <laughs> right <laughs> generally and you know it's a little bit like uh you know the story mode in like mortal Kombat, or yeah. whatever where just two people are like hey you're you ate my sandwich we must now fight to the death <laughs> yeah let's get let's get 30 seconds of talking before before we fight to get some plot development and then, yeah. then let's fight about it and then the, the how that fight shakes out you know, we'll sort of continue from there. And uh, we've seen a big increase over the years in the quality of the in-ring storytelling. Because mm. when we started, it was, there was like a lot of talking. These two people have character, you know, good guy, bad guy. And then they wrestle. And it, when they're wrestling, 
It's just very bland and they're doing moves. And over the years, uh, even in WWE, though AEW more so, uh, it's gotten very, very good about storytelling during the match, about letting people's character and motivation come across while hitting each other with chairs. It's, it's, he, it's a fascinating thing. He does a choke slam that really makes you think. Yeah. I mean, a recurring theme here for these podcasts mm -hmm. um, is taking something that we are passionate about mm -hmm. or interested in. Um, and I mean, I, I in some ways it's that like stuff that you are sort of either talking, you know, sort of boring everybody talking about way too much. It's like, you know what? Let's channel that yeah. <laughs> into, you know, something that maybe other people will be interested in. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's funny too, because for Sidewalk Slam, a kind of comment that we frequently get is, I don't watch wrestling, but I love listening to this. Right. You know, like, this is very interesting. And that's the same thing for... In 2017, we'd launched North 100. Hello, and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast brought to you by you over at patreon.com slash Loney Ready Run. Mm. Where many comments on it are, I don't play Canadian Highlander, and I love listening to this podcast. Yeah. I mean, I think there is some... And I mean, I, I I have this myself listening to other people's podcasts. Mm -hmm. There's something definitely uh, engaging about just listening to people be passionate about a particular topic. Yeah. Um, that even as long as you have, even if you have sort of a very marginal interest in that topic, hearing somebody who does have a real deep interest in it, talking about it can be very interesting. Yeah. And uh, North 100 has gone through a, I mean, Tap Tap Concede has as well over the years. We've sort of, we've kind of codified now that there's a pool of co-hosts. For a period, through the pandemic, it was sort of like a set, like myself, Kathleen and Cameron, just because it was sort of like the availability issues. Earlier on, it was like myself and James and, I mean, you were on Tap Tap for a while as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kathleen and sort of that's sort of developed over the years. Uh, North 100 started with, Serge and Alex and Jeremy White and Liam. And then it has transitioned through to now it is Serge and Wheeler and Nelson. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of like a ongoing evolution of that. And, uh, and that sort of, I think that thing is healthy and n like, not just like for, not for the health of the show. I think it makes a lot of sense to be like, all right, I'm going to, I don't play Highlander anymore. I'm going to step back from it or I'm moving away, but, you know, and other people, being like, yeah, this is a this is a thing. As you say, this is a thing that I am actively passionate about. And I want to talk about, especially like over the pandemic, the uh, North 100 really fell off in terms of episodes. Like they, they didn't record very many episodes during the pandemic mm -hmm. because they couldn't play Highlander. Fun yeah, fundamentally, Highlander is an in person is a a paper format. Yeah, and so you couldn't play much Highlander, so they just weren't thinking about it that much, and so it just wasn't something that they had strong opinions about new things yeah uh and so it's like yeah that's fine let's just l let's not try to sort of generate opinions just for the podcast yeah i think th i which again i think is just a good thing to do um as it sits now north 100 is still doing set review shows but hopefully we'll add other non-set review episodes in the future but who knows and there's the showdown which is sort of part of that north 100 showdown has has been great it's not not it's not a podcast but it's it's been it's been uh very good on the magic uh channel in 2018 2018 to 2019 we had countdown to infinity you know borrowing from bob mo comics are weird right yeah it was leading up to infinity war or end game infinity war okay yeah and so that was sort of a a rewatch review of all of the MCU films what? up to that point. One of the most popular MCU rewatch podcasts called Countdown to Infinity. It's a on, good name on on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> um, they uh, are planning to revisit the next phase at some point. Yeah, our plan was to try to do it again. 
um, when the next big team up movie uh, comes out, right? So we can do the same rewatch thing. So, so it's that's the current plan. Secret Wars is that the name of it? Uh, see, yes, that is correct. I believe cool. it's still a few years off. I think. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff to cover. <laughs> so that was 2018, 2019, 2018. We launched Askler, which we already talked about, mm-hmm. uh, and that is ongoing now. That's monthly. Uh, in 2020, Matt and I launched from Rewatch with Love. We really need one who's allergic to corn so that we can send her back to Corn Town and make sure that she infects all the corn. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. was the James Bond Rewatch podcast. Now, the original idea, we started it, timing it that it would, cu- that it would run up to the release of No Time to Die. Then it took us longer to do it, so that slipped. But then No Time to no time to die got delayed and it was like oh great now we're back on track and then it got delayed again and then it got delayed again (laughs) so it started in 2020 the last episode didn't air until january 2022 Mm. but uh that was a really fun one i really enjoyed that we got a shout out last week on ign's podcast wow uh the uh the nintendo video chat or virtual chat. The Nintendo IGN's Nintendo specific podcast. They had a digression, and one of them was talking about getting into watching James Bond with his son because his son is a fan of Magic the Gathering and loading already run it of James Bond wow. podcast series. It was really cool. Uh, and then our most recent po- podcast in 2021 was the Endorphin Report. Right. The girl Brooke is like, well, who are we to say who he is, right? You know, <laughs> like. It's fine if he thinks he's a knight and his memory's not good. Who knows what family he has out there or what life he had? They don't even care about that. They're just like, but he's so darn nice. They don't know what his (laughs) life was. But they're like, he thinks he's a knight. We believe in him. It it was an idea that my brother had. Mm. um, And it was sort of um, something that uh, I was... uh, it was sort of between him and his friend. Mm. Uh, and it was sort of something that they were like, we want to do this. Putting it up on Loading Ready Run means that, you know, it has a bigger audience and stuff. Mm-hmm. But they were sort of like, we're going to do this regardless. Do you guys want it? Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, like yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Why not? We're, so that was a review in, of rom-coms, essentially. Yeah, yeah it was sort of a uh, certain type of kind of rom-coms and, mm-hmm. and thing. And I, I enjoy that we can do... Uh, you know this sort of wide range yeah. of stuff, and one the other thing that that hopefully you'll notice as we got as as we have gone through the podcast is we started moving into these things like like the uh, from we watch with love and the Marvel one where there was you know we we we've gotten a lot better at this in recent years of these sort of making things a deliberately limited series yeah. Um, and that, that goes for, uh, uh, our, uh, our video work as well. Yeah. Um, you know, rather than we do this thing every week until we're sick of it and cancel it. Yeah. When we, when we originally launched, if we'd launched the panelists, for example, Mm. you know, four or five years before we did, we'd be like, let's do this new show. It's weekly. Ah, yeah. Whereas being able to say it's the panelists and we do a season of 12 episodes or something is it's. Turns out there's a reason people do shows like that, uh, and it's because it's sustainable. <laughs> well, because, yeah, otherwise things just sort of pile up, you right? You can't it's, add new stuff. You just... Yeah, there's yeah. the number of hours in the day or whatever, and so it's like, yeah. Uh, and and that's something that hopefully you have at home have, have seen. For instance, this podcast is only going to be, uh, you know, it's a predefined... I mean, episode. this one's sort of self-limiting. Yeah, <laughs> we could have done it longer. We could have done a year. Uh, we could have done an episode for a year, but then that would have been twenty episodes, and that would have been a lot. So it's, it's tricky enough to find the time to record the ones we are recording. Sure. Yeah, it's already going to be a lot. But, yeah. Uh, um, but I mean, I don't know. It's it's episode eight, so hopefully you're enjoying it. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a sit down with Adam and Ben now. Nice. Yeah. So let's go chat with Adam and Ben and see what they think about podcasts. Yes, indeed. Now we are here with Adam. Hello. And Ben. Hi. Yeah. 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 I wonder why they put us together. Who could say? (laughs) 
who can say interestingly it? it's yeah. just it's actually because as james was organizing all this it's sort of like when people came aboard roughly chronologically mm -hmm. and you two sort of you know in a more official capacity came came on board with letting ready run it around the same time mm. in a geological time scale do you we, have like an actual physical representation of the timeline <laughs> yeah, do, do you do you have like a, a graph With that has like faces little faces? Yeah. I mean, we've got the one from the very first video, like rolled up in a tube somewhere, yeah. right? But, but I now haven't put, extend it. Haven't graphed. Haven't well, graphed it goes very far. Up. Yeah, haven't haven't graphed everybody's individual. We should do that. We should use <laughs> to use those stickers and be like, we're and just then, creating a graphic job. I, I was like June 2014. Dang. Oh, okay. Well, well, let's hang on. So let's. I want to rewind. I want to rewind way, way back. Mm -hmm. So James has wrote, written down everybody's according to the wiki first appearance. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, I think we're. I, th I think we're averaging about fifty percent, maybe like forty, sixty for people correctly guessing what their first video was, because there it turns out there's some deep cuts that people I know don't what remember. Mine was. But you must remember yours because it was like the sixth video we ever aired, yeah. <laughs> which was how to eat fries. How to eat fries, mm. and it, it was, was also a rather traumatic incident. It wasn't strictly you. You were okay with us putting it in the video after the fact, but the actual recording of it wasn't like strictly. Um, I didn't get the okay. No, <laughs> you didn't get the do, okay. No, yeah. yeah. Do yeah. What do we? Oh, do did. we have what? What his first voluntary. <laughs> no, I don't know. Appearance. No, no, I think I know no. what it was. What was that? Didn't I do a voiceover? He did. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Nailed it, brother. See this? Oh, oh wow. It's a bear I trap. would never in a million years have remembered that. Yeah. What was the as what? Like the narrator? No, I was like a weird little mushroom guy, I think. <laughs> Holy moly. Man. That was like a Machinima one. Yeah, this right? was our first dalliance into Machinima with what the, even was the game? Dungeons? Dungeon it was Siege. Dungeon Siege 2 or Dungeon Siege 1. Yeah. 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 Dang. Even I, saw, I played that. I remember yeah. seeing, because we were recording in not the moon base, I think we were recording in James' and I Probably. basement suite Yeah, with carpet where the kitchen was. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah. What? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah was yeah. it just it's like cursed. constantly gross all yes. the time? It was yeah. cursed. It was a very cursed basement suite. <laughs> and uh, I remember it was like in the living room and you had the laptop on a stereo, like a speaker. And you put it on there and we had to record there because that's where we recorded. All right. No, sure. I, mean, I remember it crystal clear. I just, we, like, that's amazing. We recorded the podcast into that laptop for years. Because we like we like tried other like USB microphones and they were actually bad and it's like man the Apple built-in laptop speaker is actually better to, in retrospect compared to these <laughs> it was very bad yeah but at the time it yeah. was it's a product yeah. of its time right? yeah I mean that's how I used to stream was on a Samsung laptop that would overheat because mm -hmm. everything was going on it so I would th periodically throughout the stream swap out bags of peas like frozen peas underneath it and like as it would get too warm then i'd go to my fridge and i'd swap out a different frozen bag of peas and it became like an ongoing bit during like the thing was like oh it's to pee o'clock or whatever and we'd like have to go and swap everything out it was great oh me when i wake up in the morning pee o'clock that's yeah. in the morning that's me several times throughout the night oh really <laughs> no. i'm not a pee in the middle of the night gamer i just oh, pee man. Up. No, it's, it's a it's a, a function of being a gamer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, everything is. Really. Track. <laughs> everything in life is game. Game yeah. is life. Game game is gamify life. my visits to the bathroom. Look, if if those no fear t-shirts taught me anything growing up, it's to have it's no never fear. surrender. Exactly. Exactly. Ne yeah. <laughs> never piss. Never piss. And Oh, and they did teach many things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the point being, you were, I mean, you were obviously in one of the very early videos, but you've, yeah. you've been in the in the periphery for, for some been time. been in the ecosystem? Yeah, in the ecosystem. Yeah. It was 2004, 2005, and 2006. You were in, for your next three videos, they all share something in common, and I just, my love was fascinating. Bro, I don't know. They're not like the, 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 the loading ready rumble or no. things. No. Eh? It is Sandwich of Fire. Mm. Oh yeah, mystery can showdown. Revenge. Bill's oh. revenge. Oh, it was the iron so stomach. <laughs> so close. Oh, dude. <laughs> just wait, just wait. We have to use this. One. <laughs> iron yeah. stomach, right? Of course, of course they were. Yeah, of course. That makes perfect sense. Those were awful. Yeah, they were pretty bad. That was gross. Yeah. In retrospect, like dog food's not that bad, really, but. 
I eat bacon strips. As a fun. young male <laughs> on camera, I definitely played it up, right? You just get that, like, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, ooh, oh, yeah. You, do, you, you, you do that, yeah. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Yeah, That's I would love amazing. to go back in time and just be like, okay. <laughs> just yeah. no sell it. It's a uh, video. Cool so, I mean, you mentioned it a couple times, because, so you were in those. Yeah. We got you in a, f- in a few episodes of Hustle as James's friend Adam, who's yeah. waiting outside to, for Warcraft to be released. Diablo 3. Diablo 3. Hey, guys. Uh, what are you doing? Camping out. I I have RE5 if you want to come over. Resident Evil, Jeremy, please. We're here for much more important matters. I'm camping out for Diablo 3. And I'm here for StarCraft 2. You guys know those games don't have release dates yet, right? We're just being proactive, Jer. If we wait for an official announcement, it'll be way too late to be first in line, and we can't risk that. Still, people bring that up. <laughs> hey, shouldn't you be waiting in line Jeez, for wow. Diablo 4? I hear you're confusing me with a character that I no. play. Uh, did you even beat Diablo 4? Nope. Yeah. Sure didn't, brother. <laughs> yeah. Those days are gone. That yeah. Adam's dead. I yeah. took him out back and shot him like 30 times. Anyway, it's time to beat up b- boot up the new POE season. <laughs> <laughs> didn't play that one either. That Adam's dead. Oh, okay. And he they got in a fight. The, the, both those Adams. They mm-hmm. they had a fight out back and, Is it right? Adam, and Adam killed the winner. He had to kill the strongest. Yeah. yeah. Uh and then yeah, you were the guest appearance in the sixty four K video. Yeah. Those games we played as as the former member of the group core unit. Mm-hmm. Which, who did I I am actually struggling to remember. Was it ever established that the character of core unit was actually dead or no, did he just, no. he, he just left. He, I believe he was lost to like wow addiction or yeah. something. Okay. It's World of Warcraft addiction. Or those games we play. Oh yeah. According to a post Graham made in the thread, core oh. unit didn't die. <laughs> there we go. The wiki the, per, well, the wiki likes to track character that, deaths for some morbid reason. I, I, I remember all, I remember shooting that oh, so, much so much that fun. like, we, we, we got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> with, Remember how loud we were yelling? Yeah. You, you and Tally. Yeah. And I don't think you knew Tally that well. At hadn't, that point. Hadn't met Never before. met her once. It was the and first night I met her. It was like you know you were you were sort of like high and, and sort of you're like okay this is what we need to do you know you're going to be like yelling at each other because but it's going to be uh, we're not going to be using the sound uh, and then we like go and you two just like went at it perfectly the first like oh yeah it was just yeah. like and then you know afterwards it was like wow that was so cathartic <laughs> <laughs> i just yelled at her i love one of the takes you were yelling the like robot chicken um emperor palpatine on the phone oh, right. yeah. <laughs> what the hell is an aluminum falcon, falcon. yeah <laughs> but you y'all get t- a cherry coke because it's all in <laughs> it's all in slow motion and it's silent Great. club yeah i mean i i do love loading ready runs want to throw you into projects with people you've barely interacted with oh yeah before. <laughs> it's great mm-hmm. uh and, and it bears mentioning the road trip i think was a big uh because like i don't oh, yeah. i didn't i at the time even for like those games we played i didn't really feel like i knew you that well no. you were you were james's is, roommate for life essentially you know what one of my clearest memories of meeting you Graham, oh was? yeah do you know what i'm gonna say not probably a, not not a clue okay, so we were sitting in our it was at blackwood we were okay. in this upstairs we were in the upstairs of a house and we were all in the living room it was like me you james somebody else can't remember bill maybe mm-hmm. we were watching tv i had never really met you i don't i didn't interact with any of you really i interact with bill bill was like like James and like more, I would more interact with James and Bill out right. of that friend group than anybody else. And we were watching TV and I had the remote. I remember this clearly and it's very funny now, but I was a big time jerk at the time. So we were, I was flipping through channels and you're like, oh, go back. And I was like, already passed it. Got to go all the way around. <laughs> and you threw a bottle at me, which <laughs> I deserved, but I remember this. I was like, that was one of the first times I ever met Graham. Was that? I was like, "Yep, got a loop." Uh, can't I can't go back? First <laughs> time I met him, I threw a bottle at him. Yeah, <laughs> I have no memory of really? that. Oh, that's funny. That's and now really he's telling funny. you where to sit before a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Now he's throwing money at me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really funny. Holy moly! Get on stream, monkey. <laughs> oh, not the roll so, loonies. <laughs> Yeah, we really need to uh, figure out a better payment way than the t-shirt cannon. (laughs) (laughs) 
the thing that sort of started you being more sort of regularly part of learning we run stuff was streaming yeah was yeah it? yeah doing you started doing adam's game house yeah oh they can hear us they can hear us yeah because we didn't oh yeah we didn't get the mic hi guys hi <laughs> we're back okay okay so we can go, go back go back to the live one there we I go i don't have oh right we screwed up again no we didn't we were doing stuff on Saturdays, mm -hmm. and so we're like, "Hey, there's this space in the schedule," mm -hmm. uh, and you know, you're not usually involved in the various things we were shooting. I wasn't even close. I wasn't even like, I hung out with James and knew you guys were all doing that stuff, but like, I don't think I ever did. You, did you do any? You didn't do any streaming before that, did you? No, nope. that was literally the first stream I had ever done. I don't remember. Did you bring it up with James or was it James's idea? I brought it up with James. Okay. Because, yeah, I remember James saying, like, hey, since we're doing all these streams, like, Adam could stream. And it was like, oh, yeah, Adam. We've known Adam for years. <laughs> Adam's great. If there's one thing I know about Adam. Leonardo DiCaprio. Hey, that guy, Adam. <laughs> there's one thing I know about Adam <laughs> is that he's a delight to listen to tell a story. Yeah. So, yeah, I bet I bet he'd be great at streaming. Sure. And then we just sort of, like... We're it? like, all right, let's put him in the Saturday slot, and then because again, Studio we're not doing so anything. Hot. And then, and so then hot. just yell at him every once in a while be quiet. to be quiet. <laughs> be, yeah. To be quiet, yeah, because yeah. yeah. we're shooting. Not to, bad. To the extent that when we did the big like stream reshuffle, where we were pulling back on, it's like it's this person's show with they're doing their thing and moving more to like themed shows. Mm -hmm. We d didn't change Adam's Game House because. It was again. It was like in. it was on. Yeah, it was on the day when we did all the other productions. So yeah. I was like, "All right, I guess you can just sort of keep doing that." Everyone else was like, "Why does he get to stay?" And Graham just goes, "Keep working, <laughs> crap shots, yeah. loaded, ready, live." <laughs> the 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 pilot the drone. <laughs> I never cease to be entertained by the 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 fictional boss that you yeah. specifically have have <laughs> created of me. Yeah. <laughs> Because like, oh, nobody ever would believe it. Like you went, no... you went 03 in a draft this week, Adam. Yeah, those so gems are coming out of your yeah. salary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get to stay another week. I do that one. I've never mentioned to you. Like I never mentioned it to you specifically. I just started doing it. Yeah, I was like, oh, I get to stay here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, we made the gems better. We're gem, yeah. oh, we're yeah. gem positive on the week. Yeah. I get to come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I do yeah. appreciate the differences though, where you've got you've got the 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 hard person like Graham cracking the whip or whatever and then paul's like hey man i need you to do this and you're like shut up paul and like, <laughs> yeah. <in the> other, <laughs> it's just like yeah. it's night and day between no, your paul's two here. <laughs> uh, paul, yeah, yeah, paul. We, both, we could both ask the same question in the same polite tone and yeah, yeah the response to me would be like retail. oh it's slave driver graham <laughs> yeah. coming in and then with paul it's just like no no <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you both have yeah like no difference Varies. in the way that you would ask yeah. something yeah. to be done yeah there's literally no it's, difference. yeah equal sass just different directions yeah. i think it's because you're you you're usually a disembodied voice yeah. Giving yeah. right yeah, yeah. Even yeah. More so you're now. the wizard of oz yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you 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 can't see the tears that's running down my yeah, face yeah. Right. as long it's as a good thing because i probably would have stopped doing it a long time ago <laughs> Earlier, if I saw you crying, I, if I don't see any emotion, then I'm just like, all right, I get to rip it. Paul's fine with it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so going over to uh, Ben. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, uh, you were part of uh, Snap Chaos. Yes. Beige, that was that how? Beige and, yeah. Beige and Ian and uh, Corey and Heather and th that group. So was that, like, what was the... Uh, how you sort of heard about Loading Ready Run and stuff. So it was essentially through them. You guys were this disembodied phantom that lived out on an island, yep. not in not in Edmonton, where most of us lived, mm. in Alberta. Um, and it's like, it's interesting because I joined SCT as like, they were all, I want to say like in their like mid to late 20s. Mm -hmm. And I was like fresh out of high school <laughs> kind of coming in. And uh, they were like, I, I I met them through one of the people that was uh, a part of the group, uh, and was like, hey, this guy's kind of funny. Uh, I've been doing like just improv workshops with him in Edmonton. We should bring him out to a couple of shows. Uh, 
and uh, they were not on board with that <laughs> at all. But like, the, I still ended up coming, and then eventually, yeah, I ended up joining them, uh, at, which was very, very cool. And uh, every year, there was like a blackout in our performance schedules of traveling to various cons because they went and did this weird thing called Desert Bus every year. Mm. Uh, and I was just like, what is Desert Bus? To understand Desert Bus for Hope, you first need to understand Desert Bus. With this thing that's preventing so, us from touring around. <laughs> so, so Desert, well, like by the time you joined, they were already going to Desert Bus. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, or at least like maybe I had been there with them for maybe a year or so right. before. Because like, yeah, I graduated in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, and, <laughs> uh, but I probably joined them around 2012 or so. Um, and we... Yeah, we. Th it was just this thing that they would often go off and do. I had never heard or watched a loading ready run video ever in my life, and in fact, prior not not to skip ahead, but prior to doing Desert Bus, still hadn't watched any <laughs> loading ready run. Was like not aware of of what you guys did at all. Wild. Um, I just knew that it was this charity thing that you did, um, and so I at the time was working at an EB Games. And Hell yeah. yeah. I didn't actually know that. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I, I was the assistant Another. manager of an EB Games. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. I've heard a lot of us yeah. have come from that. I've been cut from that club. Matt and Jeremy Petter and myself and Ash used to work you in one too, right? EB Games. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It would suck. It's terrible. I've heard it's bad. So, and that's kind of the thing is uh, one year uh, for Desert Bus 9, I believe it was, uh, it, the way I heard it was that Johnny was looking for more technicians, mm -hmm. um, specifically ones that he felt com that were like also comfortable, you know, being a desert bus technician in front of a camera or or doing any of those kinds of things. And uh, Ian and uh, Beach were like, oh, hey, we know this guy. He literally is going to university for these things or just finished or dropped out or whatever. Uh, <laughs> one of those. Well, there's one like of a, those things, yeah. Like oh, a yeah. Declining Something like list that. Of, well, he's going he, to university. He, he's graduated, touched the camera. Dropped out. <laughs> Something Been around it. <laughs> so they messaged me and they were like, hey, would you be into doing this thing in November? And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a blast. I, I would love to go do it. Um, and so I asked to go take a vacation during that time. Uh, and my job was like, no, that's Christmas time. Because mm. mm. Christmas starts in November in retail right. land, right? And so I never told anyone this. Oh, no. Uh, specifically Kathleen, who would have lost her mind if <laughs> I had. As volunteer coordinator. At as the time. volunteer coordinator, uh, I quit my job <laughs> to come do Desert Bus. Wow. <laughs> the one, the, <laughs> Rolling those bones. <laughs> the one thing about uh, wow. about uh, the recurring thing with EB, and I mean, in similar vein, th those kinds of, of jobs that have, have been very useful in the sense that the job is so bad mm -hmm. that uh, the the push needed to quit and go do something with us it sucks. is surprisingly yeah. small. <laughs> so small. Maybe, maybe that's why when people are like, how do I get hired at Loading Ready Run? You're like, you have to sp spend at least a year at EB Games yeah. or, ga or have an a equivalent. a terrible job yeah. that you really want to quit. I mean, every, it's... I, we're not the first people to say this, but yeah, everybody should have to work a year of retail just so that oh, totally. just so that you appreciate what it's like dealing with people who've never had to work retail. Yeah. And then, you know, it'll make you a better person. Yeah. It will make you a better person. <laughs> it gives you a lot of patience. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you or were out here for your patience. Yeah. One of those. <laughs> I don't I don't even I am sorry to say, maybe we were in alternate shifts. I don't even remember D B nine. That was at was that at the moon base? No, no, that, no. That the, was the one with the uh, the helicopter, like the right. The, yeah. Yes, the red. Building. Okay, no, I do remember that. So that was uh, right after Penelope was born. It was, it, yeah, it was right after Penelope was born, and it was at the the same year that Bill passed away. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't remember a lot, so, but yeah, I guess you would have been would have been there. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Did, so did you then just? go back to Edmonton after Desert Bus? Yes. We didn't really see much of each other because I was on Zeta. They threw me they threw me right into Zeta. Oh, okay. <laughs> for, yeah, for that. Right. Because I remember for, you from for 10. Me, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. So I I, I did 9, uh, and apparently it went well. People seemed to enjoy my presence on it, which was very cool. Um, I It was the first year that I got to do the, like I started doing musical cues and mm. stuff at Desert Bus. 
Um, what did you do when you went back to Edmonton? You didn't. You didn't. Your EB, your Cush EB Games job. Was yeah, gone. I went back, uh, and I went back into doing what I did prior to working at EB Games, which was setting up stuff at hotels and doing uh, tours uh, with like like doing like audio video stuff. Audio video. Yeah, that like, seems much nicer. It, it was. So the reason the reason that I worked at EB Games was because I was about to get offered a position as the director of event technology, as the title, at a hotel. Whoa. So I would always be in charge of like getting all this stuff ready for uh, weddings and any things that go in there. And at the time I was like 22 or something like that and was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to lock myself into, which is, I wish I could punch myself because yeah. <laughs> they were offering me like 80, 90 K at 22 to, to, to do this job. And I was like, no, I don't want to lock myself in. I quit and I'm going to go manage a video game store. <laughs> Oof. So yeah. I went back to doing like the, that, that kind of stuff. Really, the progenitor of me going to here was James at the end of Desert Bus Nine going. So when are you moving here? <laughs> over and over, like yeah, well, you're, you're going to come out because at that point, bad influence like, Turner, we Beige call him. and Ian were talking either had had moved or were talking about moving. So Ian Beige was here. Beach was about to move out, or maybe it's flipped. Yeah, Beach right. had moved first. Yeah, moved, right. moved yeah. out here first, and then Ian and Corey moved out here after because they because beach didn't know they were moving out here and they surprised them on stream oh they showed up at Moonbase three and we were like what are you doing here and they're like we're here to surprise beach oh what but why you're in victoria and they're like yes and we're in victoria <laughs> yeah that we've moved here surprise and we were like what the hell yeah well i mean and the, the sort of i mean besides like obviously doing like layer stuff kind of a progenitor for it too was another member of snap chaos theater our friend dan mm. uh, and his wife moved out here right yeah yeah um who have been on uh like layer stuff mm -hmm. in the past as well including including their son kieran oh was, you're right who's 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 <laughs> He's on a he's on like a, a crap shot like a or whatever. Crap shot calling James a scrub. Yes, I yeah, think it yeah. is. Yeah. I cast this dragon. You casual. Don't call me a casual. You scrub. Plays like a turn five Shivan dragon or something like yeah. that. Or... We played train games with Dan. Yeah. We played Densha de Go. Yeah. 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 So he had already lived, moved here. And so it was like kind of slowly us all started moving out here. And yeah, it just kind of consisted of James being like, So when are you moving here? So when are you moving here? And Beach's <laughs> like, You should move here. Uh, and there was a whole. So you got process. peer pressured into it. I got peer pressured into mm. it. I'm going to have to talk to you guys after this. I... It's not okay. <laughs> I remember, uh, I think it was Desert Bus 10. You know, you, you were sort of much more around and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and because, again, because you were on Zeta, I guess, for, for Desert Bus 9, we hadn't interacted that much. I didn't realize that the guy that I thought Johnny had brought in to help with audio at Desert Bus 9 was you was the same guy who was here so was I, remember, doing it for I remember going going to johnny and be like hey is that is that guy you brought in last year going to be coming back again because he was pretty cool and he's like that's bad <laughs> 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 like oh yeah stuff that happens at desert bus disappears from the brain it's a weird it's a weird thing to be brought in to learn stuff as desert bus being your first thing because you definitely don't interact with everybody mm. uh and literally me getting off the the plane uh, Johnny came and picked me up. So it was mm. my first time meeting Johnny. Oh. Uh, and then we got to the venue and just went, okay, here go. And that was it. Like, he's like, here's the, here's the mixer. This is what we need to have happen. And I was like, oh, okay. And I ended up just kind of putting it all together. Yep. <laughs> and like that. So it was just sort of a whirlwind adventure. Yeah. And that was also uh, the Desert Bus that spawned Zippo Tricks McEdgelord. It was, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You've got Zippo Tricks McEdgelord. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still a working URL. Nice. Yeah, if you type in zippotricksmcedgelord.com, it goes to Chandra Nalar's page. On Gather on, on, on the Watsy like website, uh, like Gather. her official like bio or whatever. That's very funny. Yeah. But it took a little while longer 
for you to actually finally give in to James's incessant prodding? Like, when, was it within that next year, or did you come back for eleven? I I'm I don't remember these things. It's kind of a blur for me too. Okay, good. It was like after I I want to say it was either after nine or ten. Essentially, like I had come out for uh, a lot of like Sakina cons, which is like the anime convention here right. in town. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then at that time, Ian and uh, Beach were already doing like uh, streams and stuff, so they would just bring me on. Mm-hmm. Like I really remember him playing some sort of game where there was like various classes that characters could be, <clears throat> and one of them was Egg, and I kept forcing Beach to make all of his characters Egg class, <laughs> uh, and it just sort of became a meme on that one. I, I have no idea. All. I cannot remember what it was. It's so long ago. But I think like my first sort of real thing that I did was you asked me to do a feed dump. Oh, yeah. Like years and years ago. Right. Welcome to Feed Dump, where we're back after our annual Desert Bus hiatus. And we are all video games we weren't able to play during Desert Bus. I am Fallout 4. Finally, finally, give me all them caps. Joining me this week is... Somebody Amigo 2000. What? I've been saving it up. Okay. And... World of Warcraft. Oh, you, you've been saving it? No. I just never, ever stop. Ah. Yeah. We've talked a few times on this, um, this very podcast, not this episode, but this podcast about how, you know, Feed Dump has been a, uh, I don't know, gateway content, I guess, mm-hmm. for a couple different things. Sort of, sort of like... Sort of a tester. How How is this person on camera? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, and I had done a couple... Of, I had done, like, one or two of those, and then it was kind of... As you were just sort of really settled into Moonbase 4 was about the time that I moved out um, because basically Beej had said that he had had conversations with you about, like, yeah, Ben can come, like, if he'd be, like, an extra... Mm. or something on 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 stuff uh but also that i could edit mm. for for Lur. so i was like working alongside like kate and um raymond Alex's brother oh yeah ray ray yeah. raymond yeah and um in like that little that little room doing i think at the time was like maybe stream highlights or something i cannot for the life of me remember what i was working like on. the maybe like the stream like trailer no loading times you had loading me working times. on loading yeah, times yeah, yeah. okay That's cool what I was yeah doing. uh helping out on on those kind of ones because i do um, remember and you and i've talked about this mm-hmm. that i think it was beat or someone else was like hey you may, you remember uh, ben from desert bus yeah he's moving here to victoria yeah so or <laughs> no i think it was it was even more like i think they asked me i think they were asking like do you think Ben should move here? And I was like, if he wants, don't... <laughs> don't do it for us. <laughs> d- yeah, don't tell him we definitely have a job. Like, yeah. it, I got the impression from being asked that they were like, should Ben move here mm, for career? <laughs> and I was like, uh, what? Like, I I, at this point, like, Graham and I and Kathleen, I think, were the only ones who actually were being employed by loading ready James Ryan. might have been at that point. No, yeah, James, maybe James James was within my like actual being here. I think he became full time. Okay. Yeah, but, so it was like yeah, there it's like we can not definitely not guarantee anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I so I moved out with a job which was I Smart. was setting yeah, I was working part time setting up stuff cuz I was able to transfer with the same company mm. uh, that did hotel stuff so I was doing stuff at the Empress. Right. Um mm. So my first real actual step in the door was Alex, who I got along with, like, swimmingly, was like, I would like a co-host for Let's Note. Ben's really cool. And then I just started doing Let's Note with him weekly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're completely covered. Am I? You're, like, 100% covered. (laughs) I think you fucked up. (laughs) Hi, everyone! Sorry we're, we're late from being late we jump scared him and that was kind of like my one kind of thing and then every once in a while i would be on like friday night paper fights or afks but it was a i i don't really know (laughs) what like each sort of like entry point into it was and how i'm at where i am now it was a slow inexorable and untraceable process yeah yeah but here we are and then eventually alex was like all right i need to actually step away from let's know it's just this is not doing it for me and then we hurled adam in there with you the, truly the scariest of all jester's jazz hands yeah, jazz hands hey that's how you know something scary when you're yeah. like 
Like, I mean, I shit myself when, you know, I see a Broadway production. They're like... <laughs> Yeah, I don't even remember how that happened. I don't remember either. I don't either. I don't know how we came together as a unit, but I do. I do remember streams we did with the three of us because, like, you were on like PT with Alex and I. Uh, oh, so maybe yeah. that was it. Was that the three of you were doing it, and then you were kind of like a, a let's nope third on like occasion coming in and doing stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> this. Wait a minute. Sorry, I'm just remembering because you were talking about feed dump, and I don't actually know if you were on feed dump. Fail House, baby. But I know. Fail House. And then even before that, you were on a couple episodes of the whatever thing. Yeah. The Dutch again! Which was, I don't know where that factors into your chronology, James. Yeah, you can take your chronology and cram it. That's basically know. the way I, you said what I, that. What I, I don't know where that factors into your chronology, James. The big thing I remember about the whatever thing, of course, is that, you know, you had that, the, <laughs> that was, you had the, you know, your, the, was it, the Dutch Again, again, again. Yep. Ugh, again. Running gag. Oh. We were literally just and talking then, about that the other day. And then yeah. when you when you started streaming, yeah. that that was like one was of the things thing. that people kind of remembered you from doing, and so they wanted you to do. And, and so then you got annoyed with that. But then they would do stuff like my favorite one was oh, somebody yeah. would subs- like Thad Utch would subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> they, was, they tried to get me to say it all the time. They, yeah, they they do like to really like crystallize a meme and and, and be like, "That's your thing." Yeah. Mm-hmm. They finally stopped asking Alex to say "kitty." So hope you like this hole for pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> like cram. Oh, I it. love it. Yeah. It's 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 shaped like me. Yeah. Wait a second. This hole is made for me. Yeah. Uh. So. <laughs> Uh yeah, and I mean you've been you two have been the co-host of Let's Nope for I mean I think longer than than any other I, yeah. assemblage of people. Yeah, yeah, I I've I've officially run Let's like I like I've been on Let's Nope for longer than Alex. Yeah, had had done it, and you and I have been together for like four years or more, maybe more because it was pre Pandini. It was well just, before you just the get Pandini. to add to it. That that helps with chronology because you just Double. attack two years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it feels like it's been what two or three years? Yes, yeah, so four or five years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just realized because the viewers at home will probably get annoyed if I fail to do this. Do you remember your first video appearance? Not Desert Bus doesn't count. Um, so I want to say it's a feed dump thing, but it feels too easy. I want to say I probably because I did I was in so much background stuff at the at the beginning I've said progenitor too many times I'm like vaguely aware of me saying <laughs> I've I've been in the background of something I want to say it was probably like a loading time or something like that That's correct Can you can you further clarify the 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 month I mean, because they were monthly at the time I would assume I would assume November's Uh no Oh okay July. Closer. According to this, Loading Time Digest for May 2015. Does everybody uh, have the chance to uh, go to the bathroom prior to me? I had to make turns. <laughs> it was very important that I do that before you wash all the mud off your body. Fuck. Why was I here in May? <laughs> I don't know, man. Dude, in my head, I just literally skipped June. I was like, May, July? That's real close, Graham. <laughs> I almost said it out loud, and then I was like, wait. Did... <laughs> Does it say what he was doing? Uh, not not on James's notes. Let me look this up. <laughs> what are you going to do, bill him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say what, did you say wait, what was ben I paid was... on that yeah. loading time? I don't know if I was on the... Uh, did you say what Ben was I doing in the background? I was wondering whether you were just like, you know, uh, uh, Bigfoot style, like walking oh, yeah. the background. <laughs> it's a blurry photo yeah. of Ben. Yeah, for the first two to three years of my load, Larry, I was always just a blurry guy in the background. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. Every time we try to take a nice photo of Ben, he's always doing this. Yeah. <laughs> um, featured in this episode, behind the stream, behind the scenes of Streaming Checkpoint, Filming the Friday night's episode Six Sides, it, the Modern Master spoiler card, and the crap shots of the bad matchups to the homeopathy, the reno, the smuggle, the vine, the net, two, and the painting. Hmm. But I don't know if you're in any of those. I don't think so. No. So I don't remember I have no knowledge for What is than... like the first like video video that I'm in? I have no like I couldn't tell you there. Probably a, a feed dump. I've got to look up your your filmography now. I'm super impressed that like this, 
how meticulous this is like. Oh, oh the wiki is amazing. The, the yeah. wiki is great because it means I don't have to think. Hey, great. <laughs> it did half the work for this whole podcast series already. So the feed dump was November 2015 was your first okay. feed dump which was the episode more palatable. So what's the process of actually like making this? Do you just force feed cows a ton of tomatoes and then cure them? I believe the process is known as tanning, Ben. No, and I don't think they need to tan. They're already a very natural shade of red. Oh, that was you, me, and Ian. And it was an opening segment of us drinking window washer or fluid or like anti antifreeze antifreeze various flavors of antifreeze mm. that's correct because a woman poisoned her husband with antifreeze but was discovered by a misspelled word in her husband's forged dnr ah. <laughs> wow so extensive notes now uh this is after ian shaved his hair too because this was this oh was, yeah because i shaved him this was after the <laughs> after war boy ian at desert yeah. bus yeah ben were you into magic before you came here nope not even slightly. Not even slightly? Not even remotely. I, uh, After doing it and realizing that I was probably going to end up moving out here, I started watching um, old episodes of Tap Tap Concede. Mm. Um, I think the first ever deck, because so I actually... Wait, so, so getting into magic was like part of your part of your research yes, into, in order to come here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, and it was, when We've I moved here it. was around the time Tiny Leaders took off. A very brief period that, of time. That bubble of time. Yeah, tiny yeah. Leaders. Tiny leaders uh, really dominated. <laughs> Man, I went to GP Vancouver. I spent 80 bucks putting a tiny leaders deck together and then never once played it. So once you were both sort of here, uh, I don't know, what kind of like leaps out to you as, as things sort of, you know, memories from your time thus far at Loading Ready Run, good or bad, but just sort of, you know, memorable things. It was an early episode of of, of Feed Dump where uh, I kept getting brought on to things. It was myself. I think it was like me, Kathleen, and someone else. Anyways, this was the this was Fort Kickass. All right, Space Raptors, let's build ourselves a fort. Well, until next time, there may be better sources of news, but they don't have this awesome Fort Kickass. They don't have this hat. They don't have Ben and Corey and a ten pack of chicken nuggets. Well, I mean, we don't anymore either. These are worse than I remember. More for me. Where oh, okay. we basically stripped the set <laughs> and and built a fort out of it, and then like and had like a little sign or whatever, and all got like into the fort and did like the last little bit of the feed dump inside Fort Kickass, which was very a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, was, no idea what episode that. Yeah, might be. it was very long ago. Um, and then probably like like I mean, cool technology stuck around with me. For long oh time. yeah, that was also very early on. Like I think that might have been only my second time on Loading Ready Live. We're like the army of the seas. Oh, is so, and that is that using technology? We are using new and inventing new types of technology every day to help. Cool technology. Te- technology keeps this nation safe. Cool technology. Bacon Rothersworth. Bacon Rothersworth. Yeah. Right? I think one of my only real like, I guess, char- named characters within the Lurosphere. Mm sort of thing like bacon kind of became like a whole thing now he gets put now he gets put it if he makes it into the loading uh, the autumnal rumble that's yeah that, that, that's when you know you've kind of made a character that sticks the i i love uh bacon and lindex hosting the christmas special yeah. of mm. cfut that mm. was really funny welcome back lindex and i were just discussing Who's on our shopping list this season? If I had parents, I would buy them things to demonstrate my filial piety. But, Lindex, you do have parents. The Atari 2600 in the garage. Dad. And that decommissioned military satellite that my lawyer, Evan the Crowbar Brown, suggested that I don't talk about publicly. Other Dad. So, Lindex, what are you getting them? Weapons. We can't do that again. We figured that's a bad idea. He, he, he. Uh, but you know what's a good idea? Listening to Sequoia Barragrass's gift guide. Thank you, Bacon and Lindex. And Lindex, I love your dress. It was great, and I loved the filming process of like 
we needed Kathleen to be in the room, but yeah. not so that she would get like picked up on the mics. So she was like hiding behind a bookcase do- <laughs> doing Lindex's voice. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was like interacting with this TV screen that had an iPad slap to it. And then, yeah, Kathleen's just huddled behind a bookcase talking about the whole Cause thing. Because that's the really fun part about doing those things is that we have like doing the CFUT specifically is that we come up with concepts for stuff. And then we just sort of get everything together and start rolling the cameras. And so for for that one, we had a couple ideas for bits, like with throwing to the band that was just Nelson on the trombone. Say hello to the CFUT house band. <laughs> Hey, I was there too. And Paul was yeah, also he had there. A triangle. As, as the triangle on the temple block, I think, in one of them. Yeah, the temple block. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, house band. And But it was sort of like, all right, we're coming back from this bit and we need you to throw to that bit. How do we fill time in the middle? And just sort of everyone who was there, you know, you and Kathleen and myself and Paul, and I think Beach might have been around for some of it, just sort of like chucking ideas around and being like... Yeah, we like, didn't write a script for that at all. Yeah, it and then so this. like, that's great. Record that. Go, yeah, go. And it was, it's, I, I love that kind of, it's a very high energy um, creativity environment. Yeah, and we're sort of it, moving back into that a little bit too these days. Not to, not to bring it to present day. I know we're talking about the past and stuff. But like we're like moving back into like coming in on on, on like live days and all working to like build the show and stuff yeah. like that, which I think is really cool. That's nice. Those, those collaborative processes are a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I've been on two road trips now with you, Adam. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Very mm-hmm. different vibes. Very different vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Incredibly different vibes. I don't even remember the first one, to be honest yeah. with you. I remember bits and pieces of it. but One slightly more disastrous than the other. Wow. Road Quest wasn't that bad, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the Crown Vic might not be made of planes, but it still felt like an awesome ride. I don't know about you, but I feel like a badass is driving. Even if it's an ex-cop car. Yeah. I'm like, I feel cool as shit right now. <laughs> the real question is, how many confirmed kills does this car have? Yeah. <laughs> this is what I need to know. How, how many terrible things has it done <laughs> to other people? Both of the, the that road trip down to Comic-Con and Road Quest started out very badly. Yeah, the first day was pretty rough in both, both cases. Uh, yeah. But then things kind of uh, worked themselves out mostly. Yeah. Sort of. I was convinced we were going home. <laughs> On day one, I was like, this is not, this, is, this ain't happening. My car died. What happened? His car died. <laughs> so while the others figured out how to turn around on a highway, I tried to diagnose the problem. <laughs> I mean, we we went into, we talked about this a little bit with uh, Surge, or we will talk about this a little bit with Surge. I can't remember the order of these things. But the, yeah, the first day of Road Quest was, was very cursed. But we had said ahead of time, like I had sort of been like, maybe this, like we have a whole thing planned. Maybe it all falls apart. If it falls apart, then I guess that's the show. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like we're getting Road something fail. out of this. Something is happening. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And it's like, we'll, we'll fix it in post if we have to. But like, you know, we're going to figure it out. And uh, mercifully, mm-hmm. the rest of Road Quest went, Went quite well. Yeah, it's the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah. By by a by a lot. We made it! No, we didn't. What? What? This is the Yukon River, 40 miles at the confluence of the 40 mile river and the Yukon River. And it's that way. Oh thank goodness. I thought we traveled three thousand miles for a picnic bench. Wait, hold on. <laughs> How far that way? Well, Road Quest now becomes Shoe Quest. Wait. We're done with the cars. Technically, yes. They don't have to go any further. Yes. Which means that Gandalf made it the entire way with zero mechanical issues, therefore being the best of the three vehicles? That's absolutely not true, but yes, you made it the whole way. Yeah. I'll take it. I will too. Let's go. It was it was super fun. We were talking the other day about how you were a late addition to Road Quest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was added last minute pretty last minute it was uh, it felt like it was not very far away from 
from the actual a film week. Yeah. Man, no, it, it was longer than a week. It was longer than a week. Yeah, but yeah, it was a it was a few weeks out, and we were down a person, and because I mean we've talked about it before. It was Cameron. It was it was originally supposed to be Cameron. I don't actually know if that was going to be the exact pairing pairings. Yeah, but Cam decided that it actually was not going to be his vibe at all, which is totally fine. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. Uh, can't imagine Cameron enjoying that. No. Probably not. No. Because we did the, well, we did the test thing leading up to it. Was the, yes. Was the and he was in that. that. kind of sparked it. Yeah, it was yeah. me and Cam. Want to go to 642 Cannabis? What the f***? 642 Cannabis? The place is here. The names of the stores are not real. Like, like there was a corner store called Things in That, which is not a human expression. And then 642 cannabis. They're like, you know, the weed number, right? And so I, I asked, I asked Adam, and yeah, you didn't. I mean, again, we've talked about this before, but prior to that, you didn't know Beach basically at all. The only time I ever met Beach was at Jeremy Petter's bachelor party. <laughs> And I didn't talk to Beach. I looked at Beach, and Beach is like shorts, socks, sandals, water bottle, and a carabiner. Yeah, game on, brother. Like yeah. that was Beach, and I was like, "Who's that?" And it's like, "That's Beach." And I'm like, "Man, you are not my vibe. You are not my vibe, yeah. brother." <laughs> Have you ever, I didn't know. Him. I was I like, ever, like, but but in the in the pressure cooker of the, of the, the road crucible? quest the world, crucible. yeah, yeah. Road quest. The, it was so good. You ever lifted his coat? Yeah. No. Oh God, it's so heavy. Yeah. There's a thing in every pocket. It's so full really? of things. Yeah. 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 See you next time. It's just like, like, hey, Beach, do you have blank thing on you? Oh yeah, hang on. Is you it know? still that way? Oh yeah. If is, he does, does he, it, wait, does he still have that gray coat? Is that still oh, yeah. his coat currently? Yeah. I'm, well, oh, not. Man. It's the summer right now. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> the gray coat. I know which coat you're talking about. Yeah, I picture exactly. I'm wearing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every it's heavy, pocket huh? in that coat. Mm-hmm. We have like one of those like. Uh, ex- like exploded diagrams showing like all, all the things, things that are in it. <laughs> all the different pockets. No, Beach I've would never... make. Oh, we gotta do that as a video of oh, yeah. of like the backpack unpack. Like what's in my bag kind just, of video, but it's just be just like twenty billion pockets. Just knoll him out on the floor of Studio C. Just like lay out everything into the into little piles. And yeah, everything. dude's yeah. got at least four cans of Altoids on him. Something like that. He's tra- <laughs> he's training at ten times Earth. <laughs> Ten times Earth's what gravity. blows my mind is when he comes in with that coat and a backpack. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah what's like, in the backpack? What, you what are you doing? carrying? <laughs> what do you need all that? At that for? point, he's just like the happy traveling mask salesman. Yeah. It's like you're just you're that dude from Resident Evil Four. Yeah. What are you buying? What are you buying? What are you selling? He's just got all the like he's got a bandolier of just like <laughs> ungans and creams, you know? Oh, I know another sort of yeah. memory thing. Uh, that I would, I wish we, we I want to do something of this scale again. Was the uh, the the PUBG video that we did with the empty office? Oh, that was so much fun! Yeah, where we, I mean, it was the first time that I was like, these are my coworkers, and I'm gonna take my pants and shirt off and run around like <laughs> because that's the outfits that you wear in PUBG or whatever. Yeah, this was Moonbase uh, Delta mm-hmm. when the Multiple Sclerosis Society had moved out and sort of left us abandoned in this forgotten corner of their massive building that we had full access to. And so we were like, yeah, all right, let's film, let's lay, leave Nerf guns around and <laughs> film a film a battle royale kind of thing and uh it was super fun it went so well yeah Yeah. unfortunately moonbase 5 just wasn't on the scale some people were like oh you're gonna make use of the fact that moonbase 5 is empty and maybe do some more of this and it's like it doesn't really work what worked with that one was there were just so many like different directions you could go there was big spaces and stuff like that yeah Mm. the the moonbase prior to this was it's just pretty much a hallway like the whole thing was one hallway yeah, yeah. i liked long linear halo level yeah <laughs> oh the worst kind of multiplayer map yeah what the, what worked really well for the the ms building was there were at either of the furthest ends was a staircase and in the center was a was uh was an elevator mm-hmm. so there was multiple points so, of ingress between floors because otherwise it, it wouldn't have worked quite yeah quite quite primo level design really. it was yeah the, honestly yeah. yeah if i it's the 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 whatever the dust ver of of uh 
nerf levels. <laughs> Dust <laughs> two of nerf the, levels. Yeah, the, <laughs> re, truly, the, the MS building truly was the blood gulch of. Do we really want to play Dust two again? Can we play like <laughs> Villa? You know something. Surely we have connections somewhere for someone who works on. I, I know people that work at Bungie. Can we get a hold of someone who works in the PvP department to be like, like I got a great idea for multiplayer? Man. Yeah, <laughs> just this, and just like office. low key design it based based off space, of that yeah. office space. Based yeah. office. Based. based. <laughs> I guess one of my big memories too is like learning that I don't play video games like everybody else plays video games. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I made the mistake of playing a well, not mistake, but <laughs> I played a Telltale game. Um, oh right mm. and brother that every time i play one and J james can attest that oh, yeah. this was pre-stream adam everything was scorched earth as far as like moral choices go yeah people just didn't understand no, i remember you once describing to me how you played fable yeah and you were like this woman gave me a side quest to rescue her kid so i went and rescued the kid and then i turned in the quest and then I killed the kid, and then I killed the mom, and then I stole all their stuff and slept in their bed. <laughs> and I, think I mean, that's how I kind of know you as playing these I games, I think too. in the morning you burned their house down or something. Mm. Like <laughs> Slept in their bed is the most... That's actually psychotic. Yeah. yeah. Weren't you like... There was no red flags at this point. <laughs> Weren't you like, wait a minute. Well, it's the same defense that you always give, right? It's like you wouldn't do these things in real life. That's why you do them in video games. Yeah. This is cathartic. Yeah. yeah. Streaming <laughs> teaches you a lot about yourself, I think. And that's generally my introduction with Lair was learning how to stream, right? Like, because mm -hmm. streaming is hard. And yeah. you mm -hmm. just like, you kind of learn things and learn how to, like, I didn't have anybody telling me, like, what was a good thing, like, a good way to do it and a bad way to do it. Just figure it out on my own kind of thing. Though I, yeah. I mean, when you guys were getting going, there wasn't really like streamer advisors or no, you no. know like those youtube channels i didn't really ask anyone here like what they did either though. i think it came like, to you naturally like, i mean I, you... I mentioned this before but when we started when we launched all the streams right when it when we first started and we're like everyone's got their own shows and everything and with their individual branding like i had less going on at the time and i watched every stream I watched everything we generated just really to, yeah just, just to, to make sure just to make sure everyone was comfortable and was doing a good job and <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> it's i wanted people to i wanted to make sure we were putting having putting fun. out good good yeah. stuff yeah, and true. having fun and uh yeah Graham's no got i got a think... gun pointed at the screen <laughs> make sure you look like you're having a good time yeah. uh and no I, I think i think streaming came to you very naturally you're a very natural performer streaming's hard yeah. it is yeah. Yeah. oh yeah it's, it's a hard gig difficult. yeah i'm trying to think of what else like memories. Mine are always just tied to streams because that's usually my big chunk of what I do around here. All the choose your own adventure stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the best stuff I've ever done. Those here. are really good. That yeah. went really well. I yeah. did like though when we brought you into Friday nights that your character was just sort of like perturbed by everybody. Else. Like you were just sort of like you're interested in what everybody else's nonsense is from sort of an anthropological perspective. You're like why why are you this way? This is interesting. I okay. I'll I'll keep no I'll reason. keep hanging around with you, sure. <laughs> Adam, you're the sensible one. You say that like it's my defining characteristic and not a trait everyone should possess. So we are having a disagreement. You know, you're I kinda real like upset over this. I don't know, I understand why you're upset, you know. Yeah. Like it's like seeing somebody take something that you think is just like, you know how, like, when you watch someone get upset about a thing and you're just like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, <laughs> yeah. But you don't want to say that to them because it's me. And, like, you don't want your friends, like, hey, it's not that big of a deal. Like, you don't have to freak out. But this is, like, the manifestation of just, like, I don't know why this is so concerning to you, but this is funny. Yeah. And I think it's great. Yeah. It's, it's rare that we have characters in the show, like, outwardly laugh at other characters, right? Because everyone sort of is on the same page of, like, ridiculousness in the thing. Because this is all things that you take very seriously. Like, you all yeah. have the same mm -hmm. stakes. But sometimes yeah. in Friday night, someone will do or say something, and your character will just, just laugh at them because it's stupid. You, did, it's, you definitely yeah. give off, like, yeah, like, the, the observer vibe yeah. and, yeah. and, like, the it's reaction. Great. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed doing the, uh, the Home Alone episode. Well... It's working on me, so let's get our cards and get out of here. Oh, come on, up you go. Look at 
Look at this. What kind of idiot's gonna fall for something like this? Don't pull it. I'm not gonna... Thanks for the vote of confidence, by the way. <laughs> that was fun. Where you yeah. and I break into the moon base oh, yeah, together, yeah, yeah. and it's just yeah. me getting the, like, home alone. Yeah, it's, every single time it's me. Yeah, it's always just me. Yeah. yeah. I got to attach a pink into the ceiling. So you, the, you edited that so tightly that people were asking me for like a year afterwards, like, did okay. you actually get hit in the head by a paint can? And I was just like, no. No. <laughs> movie magic, baby. <laughs> like, that, that wasn't written in my, my contract. Did Luke Skywalker get his hand chopped <laughs> off? <laughs> I mean, if you if you if you uh, if you talk to Matt, uh, you'll learn that we have gotten better at movie magic. Because yeah. <laughs> we had to, well, we threw a pot lid at his head. We just threw it at his head. Matt Wiggins? Oh yeah, yeah. really? This is back That's in like the season, season one finale. I was like, I'll do it gently from like really close, <laughs> so just sort of lob it. But yeah. it never looked good, so it was just spoon. Yeah, yeah. He was wearing a plastic <laughs> Viking helmet. He's fine. He was wearing no useful protection. Uh, what a little brain rattling dude to anybody. Was there was there anything like when you sort of got more kind of I guess integrated into the loading ready run ecosystem thing, yeah. thing and, and saw our, our our production process and stuff? Was there anything that was like surprising to you? <laughs> Again, good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh I guess I had like no frame of reference for like just, you know, a bunch of friends making videos mm -hmm. and stuff together because of course you came in after the sketches had already sort of they were finished. Already done. yeah 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 streaming and like you know friday nights and commodore hustle and stuff were still kind of like the the bread and butter or had oh. become like the the main thing you know what we never talked about was a sidewalk slam hey hey buddy hey <laughs> yeah what are you doing Oh yeah, never even that was we it. brought that up earlier this very episode because we talked about all the podcasts earlier yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. even remember how that started I think I had learned through pure accident that you had let slip at one point that you liked wrestling. And both of us at that point were like, nobody must know. Uh, yeah. Or some, you know, because it was like, like that. Yeah, it like, was, shh. yeah, it was very, again, I've been watching wrestling on and off since high school. I still get together yeah. with friends I went to high school with to watch pay per views occasionally. Like, hey, what are you guys talking about? Uh, that, our, uh, uh, Pornography. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Not wrestling. What? Yeah. Our careers. And stock market. We care. <laughs> business, business, business. Uh, and yeah, I think it was like, oh, finally someone i can talk to wrestling about yeah. and we just started not just like talk about wrestling like oh john cena is neat but like <laughs> do you remember way back in 1982 or whatever you know like some deep lore you know yeah. what I mean? it's not like oh not like surface level wrestling like i watch wrestling yeah, yeah. And it's pretty it, rare you find someone like that. Yeah. And oh, so yeah. then we started doing the podcast where it was not just that we're talking about like, yeah, the the flips were cool and stuff, but sort yeah. of the... the Well, I mean, most wrestling this, podcasts are terribly negative too. They yeah. all think they can make a better product than the product they're watching. Yeah. Which is most fandoms, right? Yeah. The, yeah. I, I think about uh, uh, Sidewalk Slam as like the wrestling equivalent of those like uh, soap opera like uh whatever like post soap opera shows where oh, they're yeah. like this is all the cool stuff that happened this week on right time yeah, of their yeah, lives yeah. or whatever the two of you are talking about like not the sport of uh wrestling mm -hmm. uh as it's demonstrated in the, about, in like, the thing, story beats. but it's the, the story yeah, and, and the, the, the characters yeah. and the production yeah and i think that that's a cool way to to come at it i think remember when they took pyro away from us yeah it's back now though yeah it is back. and now. i like, can't you know prove that, that tony khan listens to previous episodes of sidewalk slam yeah. in fact i would almost 100 yeah. percent. i think the margin of error is so small that i'm going to say 100 percent he does not listen to it mm -hmm. but my repeated complaints about having an introductory video package for pay-per-views have been answered, and AEW is finally doing they that. Finally now. did it, huh? Finally, rather than just like the pay-per-view starts and, sure. and it's just camera already in the arena and Jr. is talking, just no pageantry at all, just show start. And I was like, please, God, I'm begging you to have some sort of build-up, and they do that now. Someday, and video packages. Someday, some some wrestlers' intro will just just walk in and go. 
we are here. <laughs> yeah. and like, huh? <laughs> like, wait a second, you owe me five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you two start it up again, maybe I'll edit it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I did like when we brought Beach on board to run to run tech. Yeah. As as a third party who has absolutely no idea what we're talking about, because yeah. it was just great to be like, Beach, let me explain this aspect of wrestling and watch sort someone. Audience just, surrogate. Yeah, watch his mind just melt. Well, that was the nice thing about, again, about doing Sidewalk Slam, uh, which we, we discussed earlier in the episode we mm-hmm. haven't been able to do just because turns out it's one of those, it's another one of the many shows that we've had difficulty maintaining because it involves uh, continually it's ingesting hard. some kind of media and forming an opinion on it yeah. as the homework for doing a podcast, which is a lot. It's tough. But a lot being able wrestling. to, yeah, being able to blow Beach's mind is a very entertaining aspect. It's fun, it. but it's like, yeah, I've said to people before, it's just like between AEW and WWE, it's like we can't, and it's not the only thing we do, and it's like you can't, po- we can't possibly watch. What is it? Three, six. AEW has a third show now. Three shows from AEW, so that's like what fifteen hours of wrestling a week, roughly, it's maybe somewhere around there. Four. Uh, it's like four. Well, they don't do their YouTube ones anymore, so it's like it's like four. I'd say four 12. to five hours for AEW. Yeah. It's still a lot. Ten to twelve it's, hours of wrestling. Also, a week. they did a pay per view last weekend yeah. in London, and then they did another pay per view this weekend, at like a week apart, because one was in London and one was in Chicago. Jeez. Although oh, the London one, highest ever paid attendance for a wrestling show ever ever suck it vince yeah yeah well, bigger than any wrestlemania vince they molding they, they <laughs> packed they packed wembley stadium absolutely the, molding the reason by the way that it's paid attendance is because the highest attendance for a wrestling show ever was a 1995 wcw new japan pro wrestling co-promoted show the main event was Antonio Inoki versus mm-hmm. Ric Flair in Pyongyang, North Korea. Attendance was not paid. Attendance was mandatory. Wait. They had 150,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> so if you remove remove that statistical outlier, yeah, uh, it was all in at Wembley Stadium. So good for AEW. Wow, that's yeah. wild. Trying to think what else. Enjoy that snippet of Sidewalk awesome. Slam yeah. buried within the podcast. Let me snatch yeah. it away from you. <laughs> like you will never get this ever again. The smallest. We're here. It's currently marked as on hiatus, but yeah, uh, who know. knows? Maybe one day. Maybe one. It's day. just t- again. It's tough. We got the stuff. studio spaces for it. That's true. Now we have more space. So yeah. you know, that's really been the big pinch point. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was in B. Before, I don't think yeah. there's anything like really bad i can say about Blair. i know you oh, said that's, like, that's merciful you know what i mean like i don't think like i mean again i've said this before on other streams where it's like it's kind of a miracle that this company runs mm-hmm. you know like no offense to like either of you as like no, business fair. owners but it's just like it is a group a large group of friends and like we don't really fight like we have disagreements and stuff like that and but it's all handled like pretty well and it's like People talk about things, and it's just wild that like a group of friends, and when money's involved, are able to keep things going, right? And it's even the trans. I guess the transition going from making no money to making money because I wasn't there mm. was harder to deal with, right? Because it's like, where do you cut? Where do you draw the line? Where do you cut off? Like, who gets what? You know what I mean? Yeah. So there is a host of complications that I think a lot of us don't think about in the structure and like what made this company. And why it's run for so long, and it's just like I think it's just a testament to not only both of you, but like everybody else here. It's just like it's kind of neat, right? I think because so. it should be, it should it has failure written all over it. Like how many, <laughs> like what? Look at Facebook, man. Like Zuckerberg and whatever. Like they hate, <laughs> they ended up hating each other. Like yeah. you and you two, just yeah, they you would know. make a very bad Aaron Sorkin movie. Yeah, Aaron Sorkin Lur movie. That'd be great. I watch it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm. so would I. Yeah, we we have the hallway now, so we can do really good walk and talk. <laughs> yeah, let you have to yeah. do a walk, walk slower. We don't have a very long hallway, so please. <laughs> <laughs> less less successful than Facebook in certain ways. Yeah, yeah. in some ways. In some ways. <laughs> I like to think, but in other ways, I'd like to think we're higher higher yeah. than Facebook in average employee satisfaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe <laughs> we don't crossed. have billions of dollars, but in friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're, okay. We, well, we when are you rich. say it like that, you know, maybe 
Maybe we could maybe we could dislike each other just a little more for a little more money. That I could I could probably handle that. <laughs> I could probably squeeze out a little bit of hate for a bit more bucks. Yeah, why not? <laughs> that's that's always our brand. Yeah. On that note. Yeah. Um <laughs> patreon.com <laughs> slash <laughs> loading a ready good run. Segue. That was brilliant. Yeah. It is it I mean, that is a bit that great or uh, that Adam and I will will do frequently was like at the end of like let's nope or whatever we'll be like all right we got this many subs this many bits you secured us another week yeah. of employment here at, Lo- at loading ready run yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like some like i remember this a couple of weeks ago somebody came in and dropped like i don't know it was like ten thousand twenty thousand bits or something Whoa. it's like somebody clip it send it to Graham so we know <laughs> yeah. Nobody well, will ever see this look, unless we look, show it look, to them. We're doing yeah. it. We're doing it. We're, yeah. we're, we're doing our part. Clip it. Because <laughs> if, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, that doesn't make a sound. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that's it's a, that's the thing with like I remember when we were setting up the Patreon. Some people, and maybe this works for them, they'll have like uh, at a certain tier. You know, we can bring people on to work full time or whatever. And I remember some people talking, like in the in the when we were starting at the Patreon, like talking about that. It's like, oh, you know, if the Patreon goes up to here, does you know, can you bring on James full time and stuff, right? And that, that was like, no, what we would, we can't, we can't do that because then the Patreon goes below that level and we fire him again, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then it goes back up. And we, I wasn't even back thinking on. about that, but that's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> We like, can. Have, I don't know. It's not going to be a James. Hey, James. <laughs> you just see the number. Yeah. You have like a big, like you make a big comical thermometer, thermometer in like the friend zone, and it's like uh, as it's slowly it's going down. You're like James. Is that yep, is that yep. why James was like so intent on getting me out here? Because it's like as yeah. soon as you hire on another person, he's tenured in, and then yeah. you're the yeah, next person yeah. on the chopping block. So yeah. Like so, then when you're like, hmm, you know, maybe we could bring in Wheeler. I was like, yeah, man, <laughs> get get him in here. <laughs> Dunk ten. Uh, we put you yeah. on the thing and people throw Last rocks at like it. Like how Matt Griffiths could edit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now he's in charge of the doomsday yeah. clock. Yeah. <laughs> it's last in, first out. That's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. I never even thought about it like that, but that's oh, very but funny. It's, yeah. it's really good. It's, yeah, it, but it is something like, like something that I, I am I am very happy about in in that in our in our uh I guess as the company has matured. Hmm as a thing that we don't have to be like, Hey, you know, cause when you, when you're streaming by yourself, <laughs> like if you're I'm just thinking about seeing the Patreon thing, get linked in Twitch chat. I'm like, Oh no, it's lower. Who's getting fired. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, as, as the company has matured and we have not even <laughs> remotely, like... <laughs> no, but, but, but it's like, if you're streaming by yourself, uh, mm. you know, you're, you're just like at home doing a stream or whatever. And you know, the bits don't come in that week or that month or whatever. Yeah. It can get, you know, pretty concerning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of the great things about sort of a, a company is that you can sort of uh, uh, smooth out those. The rough the bits. The rough yeah. bits. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, we don't have to be like, yeah, if, if you know, if the bits don't come in this week, then things are going to have to start closing. Yeah, I mean, we've talked before about the whole reason that we organize things the way that we do with like, you know, like the pie chart, right? Is that we have, there's money from Patreon, there's money from Twitch subs, there's YouTube memberships and ad revenue, there's the merchandise and everything. And, you know, we make sure that we have enough around so that if the weirdo that runs Patreon makes another (laughs) stupid Stupid decision and like the whole thing goes down in flames, that we're not fucked right the, like we're like all right that's bad yeah we can continue for some time while we figure out what to do and i think that's that's a really that's well, that's i think the most important part about what we do as a business well, making sure that know, we, we can always provide. think people were like hey thanks you know thanks for supporting us you help keep the lights on mm. we don't have to be like I'm afraid the money didn't come in. We can do all the streams, but no lights nice. this, <laughs> yeah. this week. Sorry about we yeah, we 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 can't turn on any of the lights this week. Yeah. So <laughs> the thermometer dropped. Nobody yeah. turned the lights off. 
<laughs> yeah, Paul's between, yelling at us like the dad. Who turned the heat up? Yeah. Between every stream, we just have two people at desk who are like, Haha, we had a lot of fun. But seriously, folks, we can't do this without your support. The lines are open. Yeah. We've, just, we've just got Alex on like three or four different like phones. Don't be like, us, stay on the line. We know they're buzzing. Yeah. <laughs> God. Just, we're going to put you on hold. Uh, do, 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 do our viewers even have like frame of reference for what a what a pledge drive was? Yeah. Or, yeah. No, those things are gone. Some of oh, them do. I know. Some of yeah. them do. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, I think that will probably neatly bring us to the end of, of, of the episode with, actually, bonus piece of trivia I uh, heard from James. Uh, you were not here in May 2015. Okay. You were in the Loading Time Digest for May 2015 because the other SCT folks went back to OtaFest during that month okay. and filmed a bit there that you were in. So you were at OtaFest in May 2015. Okay, yeah, 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 in Calgary. And they went they went back. You hadn't moved here yet. Right. I they I was just in a thing that was going on over yeah, there. Yeah. And huh. they were I think it was for the loading time digest. They're like, "We went to Calgary. Hello." And then you were there. Cool. So, yeah, All right. Calgary. Well, there you go. That makes a lot of sense. Uh And now I'm in charge of like four shows and a yeah. <laughs> and a studio. We uh, and when you're not doing all of that stuff, uh, you do occasionally dabble in the streams at home, which would be for the benefit of those watching. Where would where do you find? Well, just because it's the it's a better segue if we start with you. What sure. is your? <laughs> oh yes, uh, Twitch.tv slash Engineering. Although I'm not actually streaming there as much anymore. Yeah. Uh, maybe like once a week or so, because uh, I just got so much going on here. I realized yeah. I do four to five streams a week at Lair. Yeah, which is like. That's a lot. <laughs> Maybe six sometimes. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a been a cool shift. But yeah, yeah. Twitch.tv slash Ben Engineering, you can find me at. And Adam, you're streaming on Twitch.tv slash Seabats. Seabats. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you both, Adam and Ben, for joining us. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah. And I guess this I'll stick around been... for a little while. Woo. No, I'm out. <laughs> oh. This is where I've this this is where I've chosen my <laughs> this, moment to this quit. This is the grand moment. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll wait. I'll wait till the twenty year anniversary podcast. Like, right? When I got a year left. <laughs> and <laughs> quick goodbye. Quick cut before he says anything else. Uh thanks for watching everybody. Patreon, etc. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>